بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم أحمده وأصلي على رسول الكريم Today I want to talk about levels of analysis, logic and truth. Um, the other way to mention the same topic is how to think Islamically. A lot of times we have good intentions, but we're unable to Islamically process the information from an Islamic perspective. And so I want to give you a blueprint of the framework of how to think Islamically. This is a very important topic because I see so many people who have good intentions, but they're not. When a claim of any sort is made, they're not able to judge it based upon Islamic principles. And so they go with their gut feeling instead of using the Islamic principles. Of uh, And so I want to give you a blueprint for that. Okay, so let us start here. Okay, truth is when there is no other logical explanation but one from a certain perspective. So, uh, let's say uh, th there are truths at different levels. Uh, from my perspective, there's, the, there's only one Allah, there's only one God, and there's no other explanation of this entire universe other than that. On the other hand, my truth is that I pray the Hanafi way, and another brother, he prays the Shafi way. But, they both have come to a truth based upon a methodology that is rooted in something true, but they've come to two different conclusions. Okay, so you can have two different conclusions within a certain tradition, and both of them can have a claim to truth because they see from their perspective no other possible solution but this. Sometimes, it's a matter of preference, and then it's not necessarily truth. These are both good, or these are both true, but I choose this over this. I prefer this over this. But that gets a little bit more complicated, so I'm going to leave it just very simple. Okay? Truth is when there is no other logical explanation but one. Okay? Now, uh, there are many levels of truth. So, one plus one is two. What is that? One plus one is two, or math. Math is something Allah created, numbers. Allah has created numbers. And numbers is intrinsic to human beings. And math is intrinsic to human beings. So one of the ways that you know if something is true or not is from the human fitrah and what is intrinsic within human beings. And math is one of those things that how do we know he paid me the right amount? How do, how do I know I paid him the right amount? How do I know the the distance from point A to point B. It's all dependent upon the framework of mathematics. Okay? And so, <clears throat> like for example, uh, a lot of you may be uh, knowing this or not knowing this, but uh, I'll mention it, uh, that, you know, uh, the Arabs, before the time of the Prophet ﷺ, used to count the number of steps to go to a certain place. So, for example, there's narrations in history that the Arab Bedouins would take almost, uh, I think it, if it was 200,000 or 2 million steps to get to Persia. And they knew this, where they went from and how many steps it was. And then later on, what they did is they developed, when uh, they uh, added poetry. So they would know that if I read this qasida, if I read this poem, it's going to be about this many steps. And if I read this poem, it's going to be this many steps. And they would tra count their journey based upon that. This is... Is this now, this is something that can become relative, right? It may be true sometimes and not true sometimes, but the system is based upon something intrinsic, meaning the, 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 the system is based upon something intrinsic, which in this case is counting, but somebody make, may, may make a, a mistake in their counting, okay? Now, so numbers never lie. Numbers never lie. The sky is blue. How do I know the sky is blue? Well, one way I know that blue is a color is because Quran mentions Zarqa, the color blue. That's the ultimate source of knowing something, which is the Quran. But how do I know something is blue? Well, because there is a consensus 
of humanity that humanity calls this thing that we see blue. It's a certain bluish, navy blue, light blue color, the sky. That's how I know it. And how do I know it's blue? By observation. This is what Allah says in the Quran. Inna sama wal basara. Indeed the hearing and the seeing. And the hearing and the seeing have to do with what? The source. Is the source authentic or the source not authentic? Okay. What is the source of this idea? What is the source of the idea of evolution? What is the source of the idea of XYZ? Where is this source coming from? Source is very, very important. What is your source? Right? And sometimes there can be a difference of opinion on source. But source is one of the things that will tell you because then you can see if that source is true or not. So for example, uh, flat earth, the source of that is Babylonian. The source of that is magic. The source of that is occult religions. That's the source of flat earth. There is no question about it. Flat earth model didn't even come into the world until Babylonia came into existence and spread that across the world and forced people to this flat earth uh, idea. Otherwise, the whole world has only argued heliocentric or geocentric models. Those are the only two models, the whole world. And they have a whole, and, and I'm going to go into detail about that, as you'll see. Okay, so the sky is blue because I can see it's blue. The sky is blue because everyone agrees it's blue. I heard him read the Quran. I heard, like, what about uh, the, the statement? I heard him read, how do I know that's true? Well, I'm the source. I heard him read Quran and I'm telling someone. That's the source. So I want to also put here a uh, very important source. Okay. That's a big port. What we call in, 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 in Islamic studies, we call it the sanad. What is your sanad? How do you know this? What type of, is that source good or bad? Okay. What is your way of knowing something? Either you saw something, you observed something, you heard something somebody saw the moon and then tells the other people i saw the moon it's time for ramadan okay english is a language again english language is something that is what is a whole field of philosophy just on has to do with many aspects of language right and so we language is how you express yourself and what does it mean to say something right and so uh, sometimes when we argue, we're arguing over semantics. We're arguing over the language itself. Okay. So, for example, uh, you know, when somebody says the earth is flat, do they really mean the earth is flat or are they trying to, in their heart, say something else? So, for example, uh, somebody may be arguing the earth is flat, but what they're really trying to say is that we are the center of the world. Well, then... It begs the question, why are you not looking at the geocentric model? Why are you looking at the occult model, right? <clears throat> okay, so truth is when something corresponds to the facts, okay? If there's smoke, then there must be fire. Well, is that true? If there's smoke, then there must be fire, right? So we're connecting the dots. If you see smoke in the forest, you're going to assume there's fire. But if you see smoke somewhere else, you may not assume that there's a fire. So, we connect the dots. The dots have to be, con how do you connect the dots? Okay, that's a whole conversation. So, the source is important. What is intrinsically known, like math, cannot lie. Language, we can argue over what we're trying to express, but we may be saying something different. Okay, is the source from an occult? Or is the source from the Quran? Makes a big difference. Is this something that I can observe and know by consensus? Or is this something I heard and then somebody who, or somebody who heard it and then they told me it, like how we have Ramadan? What is the source? How is this coming to my ears? Or how am I seeing this? Right? So this is what Allah asks us. These are the two things. How are you going to analyze something properly if you don't know the source? Because you see something or hear something, but then you have to, in the sama wal in the sama wal basara wal fuad, right? That your hearing and your sight and your intellect. How do you analyze the information? So you have to be clear. Okay, how is this information coming to me? What is the source of this information? Right? 
what is the heart of that information? Like if it's coming from an occult, do you accept it or reject it, Islamically speaking? These are basic things that you have to know that when you're hearing a claim, even before you verify a claim, you have to say, okay, who's the source of this claim? Who, who is the first one who made this claim? Who are the people that made this claim? Okay? And that's how you know if it's true or false. So, for example, let me give you an example. Uh, when it comes to the flat earth versus spherical earth, uh, the flat earthers have one profound statement they say about 40 to 50% of the time. Oh, NASA, 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 NASA. Was the earth considered f flat or spherical before NASA? Yes. So why are you talking about NASA? NASA has nothing to do with this argument. Why are you bringing in NASA? Just the fact you're bringing in a false argument puts doubt in your whole argument because there are Muslims, hundreds of Muslims, scientists, experts who believe in the spherical earth who have nothing to do with NASA 300 years after the Prophet. So you have to be careful about what you're saying and what you're claiming because if what you're claiming is not this heart of the argument, then you lost your claim already, right? So now, <clears throat> so anyone who ever talks to me about flat earth in the minute they say NASA, means they, and this is the sad part, right? People are unaware of their own identity and their own history. They're unaware of their own identity and their own history, yet they think they know more about the Jad than they know about their own history. They can't name two or three scientists of the Muslim world and the works that they did and the name of the books that they wrote. They can't, they have never looked and opened at those books and looked at the formulas, okay, uh, ever. But yet they'll believe claims that they don't even know how to analyze, which we're going to do. We're going to look at a whole video called The Leveler that proves the earth is flat. And we're going to look at those claims that it is making based upon this blueprint that I'm giving you. Okay, and this is just an exercise for fun. I'm going to do the opposite too. I'm going to give you my claim and my reasoning for my claim and you can judge me. And then you can also judge the video based upon what is, for the most part, a very uh, established traditional way of reasoning within the Islamic tradition. Okay. So, like I said, in the Islamic tradition, we look at the source. Truth is when it corresponds to the fact. If there's smoke, there must be fire. And truth has to be something in which you're connecting the dots. Now, if there's smoke, there must be fire. may be true most of the time, but may not be true all the time. But I'm connecting the dots. Okay? Fact versus information. Fact is something that's verifiable. Okay? Now, there are different types of arguments at a very basic level. Emotional arguments, there are many of them. What about what about our forefathers? They did this, right? An assumption that is irrational. You can have an assumption. You can think about something that is irrational. I'll give you an example, okay? If I say that there's no such thing as clouds, it's all donkey poop, and the donkey poop makes these clouds. It's an assumption that is irrational. It has no basis whatsoever, Okay? Uh, an assumption that is rational. I can say that, um, let me give you a rational uh, claim. Uh, let's say um, it's pretty rational for me to say that uh, the lights of this room are on. It's a rational claim. Uh, now there's different types of rational claims. There's rational claims that can be that are empirical, that I can know by what? By the, uh, I'll give you another uh, claim, okay? A rational claim. We are going to convert everyone in America to Islam because we're going to show them the truth. We're going to show the truth of Islam to everybody in America. It's a rational claim. It's a rational, arg it's a rational, not claim, but a rational thought, okay? Now, when you have a thought, an assumption is possible or probable, right? So it's possible that I can bring Islam to the whole country of the United States of America. But is it probable? So now, you see, there are different levels of thinking. So you're looking at the source. What is the information, right? You're looking at, is it something to do with seeing? Is it something to do with hearing? Am I connecting the dots? What is the source of this, right? Why am I connecting the dots? Is, the, is it possible? Is it probable? 
And probability is a matter of degrees. So the highly probable versus not so probable. Yani qat'i versus dhanni. It is absolutely clear, absolutely yes, absolutely rational. It is clear versus it is not so clear is another term used within the Islamic tradition. Rational and empirical. Rational and empirical is something that has a very high probability, meaning a very high chance that it is true. Right? I say the sky is blue. Seems rational and seems empirical. I think I can take people outside the house and show them the sky and they would say, and they would verify that it is blue. Irrational, but empirical. There are some examples of that we're going to touch upon today. So I'll come to that in a little bit. Then revelation. Revelation is the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet. Now, there is, without the Quran and Sunnah, you're looking at the world in terms of possibility and probability. What is the source? Does, is it empirical? Can I verify this? Like with my senses? Or is this something of the unseen for which I need a prophet to tell me? Okay? Is it revelation? Is it the Quran? Is the nas of the Quran, the text of Quran, am I doing ta'weel? For example, if somebody says that uh, the earth is like a carpet, okay, the earth is like a carpet. And I make ta'wil, that means the earth is flat. Then I ask the question that when you want to show the shape of something, do you use the metaphor of carpet? Or do you use the word metaphor of carpet to show it's comfortable? Right? Do you use the metaphor of carpet and make it into absolute qat'i that it means it's flat? No, of course, that would be irrational. That would not be correct. Right? The clear text of the revelation is the revelation that does not need that we it does not need interpretation for the most part the words are telling you what it means meaning la ilaha illallah right clear consensus of the majority of the experts in the field it is not something that someone can ignore it would be irrational to do that the companions of the prophet didn't say oh we're fighting against batil so let's do away with all the fields of knowledge rather they embraced all the fields of knowledge as long as they were all experts of their fields this is what happened. Khalid bin Walid was the enemy of Islam. He was, we didn't say to Khalid bin Walid when he became Muslim, oh, well, you were a general for the falsehood. Now you're a general for the truth. But we have to do away with everything you knew about being a general. No. Knowledge is the inheritance of all of humanity. And so experts in the field can be Muslim, non-Muslim, could be Jew, Hindu, Muslim, Parsi, it doesn't matter. As long as he's a fi if expert in that field, he has a say in that field. Okay, so <clears throat> uh, now, except when it will contradict the clear text of the Quran, then of course, or if the Quran indicates something that something is going wrong. So for example, if we know that we're living in times that people would be trusted, that shouldn't be trusted, that means that yes, now the fields of experts uh, cannot be trusted, not because they don't know what they're saying, but because they have other interests, okay? Or, or it could be a mixture of those things, okay? Consensus of the majority of the experts in the field. So if you don't believe in the experts of field of today, well, what about 300 years ago? What about 500 years ago? What about 600 years ago? What about 900 years ago? Another thing that you must do in order to come to a balanced conclusion is to follow both sides of the argument. It's not fair, just like if somebody comes to you and says, let's say, uh, a wife comes to me and says, I have a problem with my husband. And I only listen to her side of the story. Is that going to be fair? I can't see both sides and both sources. I can't judge between two different claims until I sit with both sides. So when you hear a claim, you have to know, okay, what is the claim of the other side? What are their proofs? And then you have to weigh which one is heavier. Okay, And then we're going to see many examples of this connecting to the dots. And I usually say, as I said in my, one of my previous videos, four truths at least to be sure. Like the four birds of Ibrahim. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told them to take four birds and put it. So I, this is just my personal thing that I do. And that is that for me to at least talk about something, for me to talk about anything that I do in public, or say anything in public, I have to have at least four absolutely very high probability, clear text from the Quran proofs that this is the case. And so, uh, when is something, when you're dealing with a certain field, okay, 
if that field does not have a framework of definitions, or if it goes against its own field, that is probably a trickery, a lie, if you don't have a framework. So if somebody says the earth is flat, okay, and they don't have formulas for it, they don't have definitions for it, they don't have a scope for it, it's not a field of study, it's just an idea, a concept, without anything around it. It's like looking at a, a leaf that you think is true within a forest, but you don't see the forest, you don't see the bigger framework, then it is most likely a lie, okay? It, if it goes against its own field. Now, when is the media playing? When the media is playing a hand, there are also aspects to consider. For example, when the camera is on something. So if you see the plane crash into the building, and the camera just happens to be there at the right time. You know, the media is trickery also. Scripted, when the whole world is saying the same thing at the same time, okay? When it opposes something without a foundation of itself. So you, something is now opposing something without a foundation, okay? Without experts. When there's double standard, mixing truth with falsehood, hiding the truth. And as far as truth versus falsehood, Here's an Islamic principle of truth versus falsehood, okay? Truth is truth when it's humble. This is very important. Truth is truth when it is humble. When truth is true, and it, but it leads to narcissism, it leads to exclusivity, a feeling of we're elite people. So I'll give you an example, okay? Uh, there were Muslims who felt the earth is spherical, and there were Muslims who felt the earth is not spherical. But they didn't put fatwas against each other. They didn't argue with, against each other. They didn't even talk about it, really. It never came in their way of their brotherhood. Okay? And so, what is happening now, flat earth, oh, well, I'm going to disown everyone except for the people that are in the path of the flat earth. Okay? This literally happened to me with people that were close to me, you know, and when they saw I didn't agree with them on flat earth, Many of major every single person that I knew that agreed with flat earth stopped talking to me because I didn't agree with it. That's a fact of my life. Okay? If your truth leads to narcissism and does not improve your behavior, then your truth is false. Another trickery when it comes to media is social media because, and you'll see this in today's video we're going to look at for flat earth video giving all the, the the video everyone was telling me watch this video it's going to prove flat earth and it, the leveler okay it's called the leveler or something we're going to go over that whole video and look at it is this claim emotional is it a rational claim without an empirical basis is this you know is this claim actually prove what it's saying okay so we're going to look at many great great examples because this video obviously they they, they had a very high budget for this video um Social media, 60 seconds, uh, you know, the sound, making everything appealing, making everything visually appealing. When you make an absolute stance, by the way, it's it, ne the thing is, is that it's a matter of probability, right? Everything is a matter of probability. I feel something is true. You feel something else is true. What happens as a result? You feel that is true because of what you feel is the probability of it being true. Unless it's in the Quran, you don't know 100% if it's true or not. Right? Unless it's a say hadith, you don't know 100% if it's true. So, uh, so if it's in the Quran, you can be absolutely absolute about it. But if it's not in the Quran, then it's a matter of degrees and it's a matter of weighing one claim versus another claim. And that's how you should look at it. You have to look at both sides of the argument. And how many people have ever read the arguments of the Muslim scientists or looked at the formulas that they invented? History outside of Revelation is the weakest form of subjects unless itself had a process of documentation like a book. Okay? So, history is weak unless it's in a book. Okay? So, uh, what does that mean? Why did somebody do something? Well, I think they did this for this reason. But is it documented? Is there a historical proof? Somebody wrote it? Because reading some book or something written, documentation is a form of proof within the Islamic tradition. Guessing why something was done. Oh, I think he did this for this reason. Or I think they did this this for a reason. That's just assumption. That's the fun. That's just thinking. That's assumptions. That's not truth. Right? Math and language are innate. Empirical subjects like physics and chemistry and biology, 
they have to prove themselves at an empirical level. Social sciences are more subjective, things like political science, uh, philosophy, sociology, anthropology, so on and so forth. In the field of political science, I'll add, there is manufacturing of consent and manufacturing of opposition, which is what this uh, flat earth occult is. It's creating polarization and opposition, okay? Making an argument. When you're making an argument, here are the things you have to consider. What is your claim? To be for, sh to be for something is stronger than to be against, because anyone can be against anything. But what is it that you stand for, right? I, so like, for example, people that believe in flat earth prove fat, flat earth by saying the spherical earth is wrong. That's not the proper way of argumentation, right? You don't prove a claim by disproving another claim. You don't say Islam is right because Christianity is wrong. That's not how it works. That's not necessarily true. Okay, if the earth is spherical or not, and if you prove it's not spherical, it doesn't mean the earth is flat still. You still haven't proven the fact it's flat. Okay, and there's no place in the Quran. Now, let me just, Islam is right because Christianity is wrong. That type of logic is not pure, purely uh, valid form of logic or thinking. Okay, so we're going to see many examples of this. And, uh, you know, you can go back and listen to all of because what I've said is pretty much uh, important. But now let me give you an example of a claim and my, uh, you can say, proofs for that claim, okay? Very clear. I'm gonna give you four minimum, four different types of uh, proofs for a claim. Four clear arguments for spherical earth. Okay, so the first one is Surahman and Sutil Yasin. Let me just start with Surahman. Allah mentions the ayah in the Quran, Ya ma'ashar al-jinn, O assembly of jinn and men. Ya ma'ashar al-jinn wa linsi in istata'atum, if you have the ability, uh, that you have the ability to leave Aqtar is samawati wal ard Aqtar means diameter or Qatar means diameter the diameter of something and Aqtar means is the plural of that meaning three or more if you have three or more diameters you get a spherical shape so Allah says Aqtar is samawati wal ard the diameter of the heavens and the earth, meaning the heavens is in a shape that's similar to something that would have diameters, meaning it's spherical. And the earth is also spherical because we have the north to south pole, one diameter. We have the equator is another diameter from the, diam from the one point of atmosphere to another point of atmosphere is another diameter. Let me actually show this to you so that everybody is clear on some of the claims that I've already made also. So, Aqtar means diameter over here. Qatara. Ya ma'ashar al-jinni wal insin istata'atum an talfuzu min aqtar is samawati wal ard. So, if you can, and you can also see the pictures of the diameters here. Okay. So, this is a diameter. Okay. Aqtar has many meanings, but they all have to do with a straight line. For example, uh, drops of urine of a camel, one after the other, one after the other, in one line or a group of camels standing in one line, a caravan of, this is called Aqtar. All of this is Aqtar. And Aqtar is used in geometry, in Arabic language, to mean a diameter. So if you have more than one straight line, and another straight line, and another straight line, that shows a spherical uh, uh, shape. Okay? It's a diameter of something. And so... And that's what the scholars like Al-Biruni did. The first thing that they determined was the circumference of the earth, which I will come to a little bit later. Spherical heresy is incensed, literal-minded Christians since the time immemorial. Because, you know, this literal reading of Quran, this literal reading of the Bible, that's part of the Dijalic framework. Because it has only one eye. When you have only one eye, you lose depth perception. So you see everything in a linear way, in a flat. So the sun becomes a disk, right? You don't see things in it with its depth anymore. So the, the, for the flat earth cosmos, this is why people are like, why are you doing this, Sheikh Omar? Why are you talking about this? Why are you trying to create? I'm not trying to create issues. You don't realize that how serious this is from a perspective of perception and interpretation. For the flat earth cosmology, the ancient Hebrews borrowed from the Babylonians is implicit throughout the Bible. 
Okay, and this is exactly what they're trying to do with the Quran now. They're trying to take verses of the Quran that call that say, you know, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala has made the the world like a carpet or the world like a bed, and the shape of the the, the bed and the carpet somehow now become flat earth. Okay, this is the level of thinking we're at. It's just seriously pathetic. And so, let me also show you. Early Greeks, Sumerians, Babylonians, Egyptians, and Vikings. Now, especially these last three, Babylonians, Egyptians, and Vikings, we all know this is all a cult. All believe the earth was flat, disc, or a plain surrounded by water. This is based upon the evidence of what they saw around them at that time. Otherwise, forever, for from, to, from the time of the Greeks, okay, it was very easy to figure out the earth is spherical. And then, of course, Al-Biruni came along and gave us the mathematical foundation of that, which I'll be talking about later on. And this is what I said. How do you know something is true? Well, the way you know something is true is does it have a mathematical uh, foundation? So I'm giving you four different types of arguments. The first one, the first part of the first one is Sutrahman Akhtar, a diameter. So when there's a diameter of plurals, that's a spherical shape even one diameter would be spherical right two is definitely spherical and three is definitely definitely spherical uh so the yasin again people kept questioning me so this time i'm going to explain it inshallah ta'ala in a better way now what you have to understand from an islamic perspective is no matter what perspective you hold that just if you want to hold a difference of opinion you have to accept your opinion is the weaker of the opinion or the less accepted of the opinion and not be biased against those who what who hold a different opinion than you also based upon quran and sunnah okay so in ayah number 33 where this whole situation because in surah al-yasin whenever allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says like in ayah number 32 wa in muhtarun allah repeats this ayah three times each time the topic changes okay so for example uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says again over here in kanat illa sayhatan wahidatan fa idha hum jami'un ladayna muhtarun in ayah number 53 okay and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says it again uh, again towards the end okay so this ayah is one of the signs that a topic has ended and a new topic is beginning okay so wa in kullu lamma jami'un ladayna muhtarun and then ayah number three, 33 talks about the earth. Now notice this style of the this part of the Surah Al-Yasin. Right? And then uh, Right? And So you see this style. So in this, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala starts by talking about the earth. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about what the um the the sun and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that the sun is definitely and all of them float in their orbits. All of them. All means more than in air in English, all can be two or more even but in arabic it has to be three or more so there are three things talked about in this passage of the quran the earth the sun and the moon this is something nobody who has a basic understanding of arabic language can deny this and anyone who denies this is denying the sarihul nas the text itself because the text will not use the word kul after mentioning sun and moon only okay especially in this place of the Quran, Surah Al-Yasin, okay, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is mentioning all three, okay, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in order to exclude the earth, would have had used the word kila, those two, okay, or huma, okay, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would have had to use a word to exclude the earth from the passage to only mention the sun and the moon, okay, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Kullun, all of them. Okay. Another thing that you need to do is look at other parts of the Quran with the same subject. So, for example, there's two places in the Quran where Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says, "Wa kullu fi falakin yasbahun," and all of them are swimming in their orbits. Okay. Uh, 
So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions again here, the sun and the moon. لَا شَمْسُ يَنْبَغِي لَهَا أَن تُدْرِكَ الْقَمَرِ وَلَا لَيْلُ سَابِقُ النَّهَارِ وَكُلُّهُ فِي فَلَكٍ يَسْبَحُونَ And in Surah Al-Anbiya, هُوَ الَّذِي خَلَقَ اللَّيْلَ وَالنَّهَارِ He's the one who created the night and the day. وَالشَّمْسَ وَالْقَمَرِ The sun and the moon. كُلُّهُ فِي فَلَكٍ يَسْبَحُونَ All of them are floating in their orbits. So the light and day is referring to what? The earth. The aspects of the earth. And then it refers to the sun and the moon. So it's very clear to the person who is reading this portion of the Quran. Let me also show you in Surah Al-Anbiya, in ayah number 31, Allah mentions the earth first. وَجَعَلْنَا فِي الْأَرْضِ رَوَاسِيَةِ And on the earth we have made uh, the, the strong big mountains. رواسي أن تميد بهم Lest it would move with them. وَجَعَلْنَا فِيهَا فِجَاجًا سُبُولًا And we made, you know, places for them to pass through. لَعَلَّهُمْ يَحْتَدُونَ So they will be guided. وَجَعَلْنَا السَّمَاءِ سَقَفًا مَحْفُوزًا And we made the sky a protected ceiling. Just like the ozone layer is a protection. وَهُمْ عَنْ آيَاتِنَا مُعْرِضُونَ And they turn away from our signs. هُوَ الَّذِي خَلَقَ اللَّيْلَ وَالنَّهَارِ And he's the one who created the night and the day. وَالشَّمْسَ وَالْقَمَرِ And the sun and the moon. وَكُلُّ فِي فَلَاكِ يَسْبَحُونَ And all, meaning plural, meaning more than just two, are floating in their orbits. Okay? So now when you go back to Sutul Yaseen, what is interesting, okay, Sutul Yaseen, Allah mentions the word, وَآيَةٌ لَهُمْ أَنَّا حَمَلْنَا ذُرِّيَّتَهُمْ فِي الْفُلْكِ الْمَشْهُونَ And then, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, okay, وَآيَةٌ in ayah number 41, in ayah number 40, وَكُلُّ فِي فَلَكِ يَسْبَحُونَ And ayah number 41 mentions fulk again. وَآيَةٌ لَهُمْ And a sign for them is أَنَّا حَمَلْنَا ذُرِّيَّةٌ فِي الْفُلْكِ الْمَشْهُونَ That we made a sign for them that we carried their progeny in the fulk, in the ark. What is an ark? What is a fulk? What makes a fulk a fulk? What is the relationship between a planet being a fulk or the sun and the moon being a fulk? And a ship being a fulk. So because they're the same word, there must be some relationship between the two. So what is the relationship between the two? It is the same relationship you find in the word aqtar, the diameter. Because fulk is something that has a pole in it. Like a sailboat that has a pole to anchor it. So the planets have a pole. Okay? And what? The ship also has a pole. And the pole is used, What? Instead of being inside something, it's outside something to use the energy of the wind to make the, the ship move. And the planets or the earth, typically what all scholars accept throughout history is that the earth has an axis around which, the, which they call in Arabic qutub. There's a qutub around which the whole earth moves. It's poles. Okay, So different fields of different poles around which the earth moves. This seems to align with what the scholars of Islam have said in the past and what many experts in the field are saying today. Okay, but what I'm saying is, I'm giving this as the first proof that the sun, that the Quran is saying that the earth is spherical. Okay, why? Kullu fi falaki yasbahun is referring to the earth. Okay, and each time Allah mentions this, Allah mentions the earth. The, all the parts of the Quran, meaning both parts. Allah mentions the earth, Allah mentions this, it was the sun and the moon. And kullun, if you ask any Arab, will tell you it's referring to two or more things. Okay? So, and the word fulk is also used for ships. So, a ship has a central uh, pole and a planet. According to the Quran, all celestial orbits also have a pole. That's what makes a fulk fulk. And just let me mention here the definition, you can see it. Aqtar means a straight line extending from one side of a circle to the other side so its middle falls upon the center. Everything has a center. This is part of Tawheed. So the, okay, so what does the word fulk mean? It has become round. Okay, and it is the revolving of the stars. This is by definition what it is. Okay. But what else does it mean? Because when something goes round and round, it must have what? It must have an axis. So the other meaning of this is a circuit. It's an axis. Okay? And so to put into motion by wind or by water and so on and so forth, a pivot, an axis, okay? 
revolving of the heavens. Now, now I will let you judge. I will let you be the judge that I'm saying I'm making a claim the earth is spherical. From the text of the Quran, it says the earth has diameters. A, a line from one end to another end of a circle. This is what the Quran says. And number two, fulk, which is also an axis. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uses this word for the earth, for the sun, and for the moon. In both places where this, uh, in both uh, abaras, the air, the, 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 not in that particular ayah, but in that section where it's talking about the information, it's talking about the earth, sun, and moon, and its relationship with one another. And then says, Kunnu fi falakin yasbahun. Okay, and they're all, meaning the sun and the moon, earth, traveling in their orbits. That's my first proof of my claim. Now, when I make this claim, this is, is it highly probable now? Is it logical? Is there a possibility? What is the, I'm trying to help you understand how do you think Islamically? Is this enough of a proof? Okay, then let's go on to proof number two, which is a different type of proof that I, that I will share with you, okay? Which is Al-Buruni and Atusi, okay? Who used math to figure out the diameter, the con, the con, the conferences, the, the circumference of the earth. Come on, let us look at that now. That al Khalif al Ma'mun uh, measured or made an estimate. So he was a Khalifa and he was also a geographer. He estimated the circumference of the earth and came up with the figure of 24,000 miles. And if any of you is in that field, you know that this is only a few hundred miles off the most sophisticated modern means of measuring the circumference of the earth. So that's one in terms of how early the Muslim discovered that. But what is more fascinating that you talk about like the 8th century and somebody speaking about the earth as spherical in shape, that piece of information was not known in Europe until so many centuries later. Remember the, the difficulty that some scientists have with religious authorities when they said the earth is not flat as some clergy believe, uh, believed it to be several centuries before. And by the way, I'm, may I add also a remark here. We're not saying that each and every invention by Muslim or others was directly or specifically inspired by a specific ayah on the Quran on this. But this could be a case in question that one would be safe to assume that he was inspired by the Quran. There are several ayahs in the Quran that show that the earth is not really flat. Okay? Yulijul uh, Layla fil Nahari wa Allah merges the day into the night and merges the night into the day, day and, and night and night and day. You can't imagine merging if the earth is flat so the sun comes from one side, it is all day, then sunset and go to sleep, everything is dark. Merging means there is gradual. When the Quran speak also Rabbul Mashariqi or Rabbul Magarib. Not only one east or west or two, then depending on the change in the uh, folds of the earth that some scientists are probably speculating about, but Mashariq, many easts and west, you can't imagine having different points, numerous points of sunrise and sunset on a spherical, uh, except if you have spherical uh, shape itself. Anyway, there are lots of evidence this is a topic by itself, but it could possibly be inspired by reading the Quran. There have been a number of uh, very famous geographers. One was Al-Idrisi, who also described the earth as spherical. It took still the 10th century before Europe even came to accept that. Uh, and later in the 10th century, Al-Mas'udi has encyclopedic work on geography. Al-Yaqubi uh, in his famous Mu'adam al-Bildan in the 12th century, adding, you know, the various major cities and their position on the earth. Even mathematical geography was introduced by Muslim geographers as early as the 13th century by Al-Marakishi. Yeah, Al-Marakishi was famous. So whether you like it or not, the 
spherical Earth has developed an entire foundation based upon math, which is one of the strongest ways to ver verify something is by math. Numbers don't lie. And so for flat earthers to say that, oh, there's no basis of a spherical Earth after all. And this is the thing. People know more about, you know, supposedly occults and the jazz and stuff like that, even though they I don't know how you can believe in flat Earth and know about occults because the, the source of that is the Magi. And uh, otherwise, in the whole history of human beings, there's only been two. There's the, geo, the geocentric model, which was there for most of the time of history of humans, or the, the heliocentric. And so, <clears throat> anyway, coming back, uh, Muslim scientists who figured it out, okay? And let me show you. Library of Alexandria. Eratosthenes had heard that in Syene, a city to the south of Alexandria, no vertical shadows were cast at noon on the summer solstice. The sun was directly overhead. He wondered if this were also true in Alexandria, so on June 21st he planted a stick vertically in the ground and waited to see if a shadow would be cast at noon. It turns out there was one, and it measured about 7 degrees. Now if the sun's rays are coming in at the same angle at the same time of day, and a stick in Alexandria is casting a shadow while a stick in Syene is not, it must mean that the Earth's surface is curved. And Eratosthenes probably already knew that. The idea of a spherical Earth was floated by Pythagoras around 500 BC and validated by Aristotle a couple centuries later. If the Earth really was a sphere, Eratosthenes could use his observations to estimate the circumference of the entire planet. Since the difference in shadow length is 7 degrees between Alexandria and Syene, that means the two cities are 7 degrees apart on Earth's 360 degree surface. Eratosthenes hired a man to pace the distance between the two cities and learned they were 5,000 stadia apart, which is about 800 kilometers. He could then use simple proportions to find the Earth's circumference. 7.2 degrees is 1 50th of 360 degrees, so 800 kilometers times 50 equals 40,000 kilometers. And just like that, a man 2,200 years ago found the circumference of the entire planet with just a stick and his brain. Little blue dot we call home. Abu Rehan al-Biruni, being a mathematical visionary, combined algebra and trigonometry to solve the epic problem of calculating the size of the Earth. Having read al-Biruni's description, let me tell you how he estimated the size of the Earth. Al-Biruni needed a mountaintop from where he could see the flat horizon, and Nandana Fort was ideal for that. But first, he needed to measure the height of the mountain. He did this by going to two points in the valley which were in a straight line with the mountaintop. Then he measured the distance between those two points. And finally, he measured the angles between those points and the mountaintop. To do this, he used a device called an astrolabe, which is basically a giant protractor with angles and degrees and a pointer to determine his line of sight. Now he had enough information to measure the height of the mountain using trigonometry and algebra. He needed only one more measurement to get the size of the earth. Angle of the line of sight of the horizon as it dips below the horizontal. Now here's the amazing part. Al-Biruni imagined the mountain as a large right angle triangle which has three corners, the mountaintop, the horizon and the center of the earth. Using trigonometry, Al-Biruni figured out that the angle of the horizon and the height of the mountain were related to the radius of the Earth, and algebra helped him calculate it. This was the formula that allowed Al-Biruni to calculate the circumference of the Earth, which, by the way, is within 200 miles of the value that we know of it to be today, about 25,000 miles. That is an accuracy of 99%, and that too when it was measured almost a thousand years ago. Let that sink in. Out of the hundreds of scientists, I won't go into much detail any more than I have to, to make my point of the type of proof. So this is a Tusi's work, okay, and in which he um, solved many, many problems, and, and he was able to predict eclipses and so on and so forth using the formulas that he had, okay. So now, what is my point? So I mentioned the diameter. You mentioned Strahman and then Fulk as an axis, Al-Biruni, Atusi, math and its prediction. Now, I will ask you how strong of a proof is something that has a foundation in math. 
And how strong of a proof is something that relates that math with the idea of a diameter or an axis in Quran? So that's two of my proofs. That's the experts in the field. Now, as far as theologians are concerned, they had many different opinions and it was not a big deal amongst them. But the majority believed the earth was spherical, including Imam Ahmad bin Hanbal, who said it was ijma' of his time. Imam Ibn Taymiyyah said it was ijma' of his time. Imam Ibn Hazm said, it is, this is what the Quran says. It is how they, you know, they had a few ways of figuring out the Qibla direction. One was to use the North Star and figure out how many fingers between them and the North Star. So one finger means a certain distance, two means a certain distance, four means a certain distance. The other was to send pigeons, they used to send pigeons. Okay. The, the third one was to calculate it. Well, you know, they didn't calculate based upon what? When uh, the they didn't calculate based upon and what's interest uh, this is a very interesting subject because of the way birds fly B birds don't fly as if the earth is flat the birds fly as if the earth is spherical because when they used to throw the birds the direction it took was according to the same way that you could calculate on a spherical trigonometry but i'm not going to go to that right now so um the Flight, the, the Qibla direction was also something that was calculated. Okay, And so this is something that's been part of our tradition. There's no denying this. There's no denying that. And, and so there's both aql and naql as far as the history and the ulama are concerned. There's Sutra Rahman, Sutra Yasin, Fulk and Aqtar. Then there is proof number three. The observable experience, for example, shadow on earth or the ship in the horizon. So the ship in the horizon, you see it go off in the sea and it becomes smaller and smaller and smaller. So let me just show you what I mean by that. What is the observable experience? Something goes off and further and further and first the bottom part goes away, then the middle part goes away, just like the sun. The sun sets because it looks like it's setting, meaning the bottom part goes away, then the middle, then the top. That's the human experience. Right now, uh, the other that's that's one aspect. The other is the um, the universe, the nature of the universe, which is everything is spherical, right? So if everything in the universe is spherical, that means that uh, Earth is also because the Sunnah of Allah doesn't change is probably spherical. Now, I agree at this level of observation and experience. What? The earth seems to be stationary, but that is not the subject. Everybody keeps saying, oh, do you believe you're living in a ball that's moving? That's a different subject. The issue is, is the earth flat? Okay, you can say the earth is not moving and say, I believe in the geocentric model. But if you say, I believe the earth is not moving and I believe in the flat earth, you're believing in the belief of the Magi's. If you say that you believe the earth is not moving, and the earth is stationary, you still fall within the realm of the Islamic tradition of the geocentric model. Okay? <clears throat> and now that all that has to be discussed is the proofs for that, that is the uh, heliocentric model, an extension of the geocentric model in terms of knowledge, or did they make a mistake because of their theology, their, their, their view of the atheistic world? Okay? So I agree at the third level, there are counter arguments to my argument, but Sutra Rahman, the Al-Biruni, At-Tusi, the Muslim scientists, the experts in the field, majority of the theologians, there's no doubt about that, okay? The observable experience, again, when you're looking at uh, like the ship going further and further, what happens? The sun, what happens? It just goes under the earth, right? This is why you'll see the sun go under the clouds. History of those who were for and against flat earth. Well, what's the history? The history of the people that were for a certain argument were able to produce a foundation and a system and a whole uh, field within that. But the people that were saying the earth is not round, they didn't produce anything because they had no alternative. Okay, so the thing that has been produced way before NASA. So anybody who says NASA to me is just is stupid. Okay, stupid. 
And that's what I'll say at this point. Just stupid. He's just falling for the the myth, mythology of the magis. Now, let's look for, so, for for solid proofs for the flat earth using the famous video called Level. Okay, so now let's watch this video and you will decide based upon what I have basically taught you. That is this an emotional argument? Is this a rational argument? Is this an empirical argument? Is this possible? Is it probable? Uh, what is the other side of looking at this? So we're going to do that. And if they say something that's true, we have to say it's true. As Muslims, it's not. It's about the truth. Allah is going to ask us if we stood with the truth. Okay. So now let's. Do you believe this is a real live recording? Do you believe? How about now? Does this make it more believable? Ask yourself. So putting the live streaming mark, does that make it more real? Or if you're just saying it's real? So this is his argument that the flat, the flat earth is right and the spherical earth is wrong. Is this real? Do you believe? Is this real? Let's try this another way. Breaking news. NASA finally did it. They finally did it. They're finally live streaming the earth spinning from outer space. The world is celebrating. This one will go down in history. Convinced? Well, if you didn't fall for that, then why would you fall for this? Maybe you just never pay attention. When you do pay attention, you start to notice things. Are you paying attention? Pay attention. Pay attention. Pay attention. Notice how they're showing the famous people that agree with Flat Earth. And notice how this is, is there any argument yet that they've made? It's just emotional statements, right? So far, it's just emotional statements. So far, it's very, very expensive visuals and uh, no argument yet. Did you know that starting at the end of 2015 through 2017, flat earth was one of the top search terms in the USA, let alone the world? While most of you were falling for the political charades, the rest of us were trying to discover the true nature about our world. My name is ODDTV. I'm a local rapper here in Denver, Colorado. I just want you to know the truth, so please don't shoot the messenger. It's a bitch, but this is how it is when you live. I've been rapping for 20 years, just like anyone else. When you're a kid and you're really into music, you're into making music, every kid looks in that mirror and fantasizes about being famous. And because I like to make my own music, I, I just decided, screw it. I'm going to make a YouTube channel and start talking in videos. There has never been one experiment that proves that the Earth is in motion. When you try to find the curvature of the Earth, it's nowhere to be found. Unless you're looking at footage from GoPro cameras that have fisheye lenses, Hollywood movies, or NASA propaganda. Started making the videos in 2000. Okay, so he made, so first was all emotional. So now he made some arguments. And so let's look at those arguments and then let's compare them. He said there's never been any proof the Earth is spherical. Well, okay. We just proved through al Beiruni and Atusi and others because what are they trying to attack? They're trying to attack NASA. And this is not an argument of NASA. This is an argument of knowledge and history and human knowing certain science. And this is one of the things. Did something come all of a sudden spontaneously like this flat earth phenomenon in America or in the world? Or was it something that was developed over the centuries and refined over the centuries? And the idea that the earth is spherical has been there for more than a thousand years. And now this person comes along and says... And this is an emotional statement and it's not an argument, but I'm just making the point. Now this person comes along and says, oh, just forget about everything in the past. We're going to just attack NASA to destroy the entire tradition of the past. And that is an important point that I just made. But is there no proof? Well, there's mathematical foundations for it. Like I said, and I said, that is the strongest. Math is the strongest of the sciences to prove something. Not alone, yet not alone considering what the pictures, which you'll say every single picture is lie, right? Oh, because they have fish eye lens. Well, you use fish eye lens for what? What does that have to do with lying? So, as far as fish eye lens is concerned, you know, I hate it when people lie. 
The only instrument that takes fisheye lens, like a wide lens, is the uh, the space station up in the Hubble, the, the space station. Okay. Otherwise, telescopes they're not uh, fisheye. What are you talking about? So when you start saying fisheye, I already know you're 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 not telling the entire truth. Are you saying there's no pictures that has normal pictures? Nobody looks at the universe with normal telescopes. You get them from Walmart. You get a normal telescope from Walmart. So, I mean, it's just, they have these things for little children without the fisheye. We have them in our science labs, in our schools over here. 2014, early 2015, started getting noticed. You're living in a world where there's fake people faking events on TV in order to move agendas. And he must be really real with all those chains and everything, right? That his son, of, he's a great source of knowledge because he raps. With the earth being flat, I couldn't just sit around to do nothing. There was videos everywhere. There was videos of people doing science, putting balloons up with a camera that doesn't have a fisheye lens on it, like a GoPro lens, a wide angle lens. And they were using these cameras that didn't have those. The horizon rose to eye level, which would be impossible on a ball that would be falling away from you as you rose up. There's people putting out top 10 NASA hoax videos, debunking the moon landing, picking apart NASA just left and right. It was awesome. Awesome time for YouTube between 2015 and 17. Even Google mentioned it during their commercial. Do you remember this? Why would Google be promoting this? Okay, so if Google said the Earth is flat, that means that they believe, NASA believes, again, or, or Google is saying the Earth is flat. By the way, uh, this is a statement that's used in political science. Do you know what it means nowadays to say the earth is flat? Well, I don't know if you've heard of Thomas Friedman's book, but it's called The Earth is Flat. And what does Thomas Friedman mean by saying the earth is flat? He means because of the internet, knowledge has equalized and information is equalized for all people, that whether you're in Pakistan or America. And people use Thomas Friedman like, oh, he wrote a book called The Earth is Flat. You don't even know what the book is about. It's about how knowledge has equalized because internet is used by the experts. It's used, used by the layman. And the only difference is the experts know what terminology is to look for. Otherwise, the layman looks for the same thing. But knowledge has equalized throughout the world because of the internet. And so he called that, Thomas Friedman called it, the earth has become, uh, the, the earth is flat, right? And Google is also using it in terms of the earth is flat. You know why the earth is flat? Because the internet makes all knowledge equal to everyone. So this is the type of lie that is promoted in this video. So now, what do I have to say about somebody who was a rapper and a famous rapper, rapper at that, and he's making all these claims without any proof, and then he's showing this thing, the earth is flat, without understanding the philosophical or the historical background of it, right? That why, and let me in fact show that for you so that it is uh, very clear that why the earth is flat because this book became very famous thomas uh friedman uh earth is flat okay uh the world is flat that's what he called it okay and so thomas friedman writes a book called the world is flat if it would only come up here come up here yet Allahumma sunyana Muhammad okay so let me just try another one okay the world is flat a brief, brief history of the 20th century okay further updated the world is flat so what is he talking about he's talking about the information has equalized everywhere when Google said the earth is flat they don't mean Oh, it's some secret message. And see, this is how it works. With people that know more about uh, conspiracies and Dijal and all this, they look through that lens without understanding the big picture of what's happening in the world. And if you don't know the big picture of what's happening in the world, you're going to read information wrong. So you're going to say, oh, Google was giving this secret information out in this message in which they wrote, the earth is flat. No, that's not what they meant. They're going with what Thomas Friedman said, who is one of the most famous political scientists in, in America, in the field of political science. Okay. So, that debunks... No, we know why. 
They were panicking. Panicking because the platform they purchased 10 years ago was collapsing with truth. The powers that be would not allow that. Because we want to provide users with authoritative, trustworthy Ms. Downs, I, I'm sorry to cut you off. I only have a minute and a half. And I, I, I don't really need to hear what you're trying to provide. I want to know how you're dealing with all these conspiracy theorists on your platform. So the, the first way is by demoting low quality content and promoting more authoritative content. And the second is by providing more transparency for users. So we're introducing boxes that provide factual information at the top of results that have shown themselves to turn up a lot of information that is counterfactual, such as searching for the earth is flat on YouTube, where you see a lot of- Your response is to put a box saying, nope, the earth is not flat. Correct. Okay. So instead of deleting all of the millions of videos we have made, they simply decided to bring in their puppets to reiterate the agenda at stake. We are already sufficiently motivated to invest the necessary resources and- Or that's the best way to create an, a fake opposition is to let the videos exist and let you think that, oh, you're part of this truth world, right? Um, the point is, what I'm saying is an also an assumption. What they're saying is true, but all of that's going to be used against the deen, not flat earth. Flat earth is being promoted left, right, and center. Look at this video, how much money it took to make this video. Are you joking? Okay, so don't be fooled. I mean, this is just all manufacturing consent. No argument has been presented yet that the earth is flat. I'm looking for, from my perspective, I'm looking for four arguments that they'll say, okay, the earth is flat. Even the fish eye lens is not an argument that the earth is flat. And people and addressing this threat. You can tell it's real because it looks so fake, honestly. <laughs> As you know, from a mathematical perspective, in order to begin to see the earth is curved, you have to see at least 800 kilometers. Okay, you have to have a width of 800 kilometers more than that, tr double, triple, to even begin to see the curve. The earth being flat is getting out of control. Can you please help? Can you please help? When you stand on the shoulders of those who came before, you might just see far enough to realize the earth isn't flat. What's one is? Two. The color is the sky. Blue. And the earth is? Round. Just like it is here. <laughs> this one celebrates flat earth theory that is spreading ironically around the world. And it's possible roundness. Uh, spinning. <laughs> now they are talking about it. They want you to search for it because they already changed their algorithm to be set up in their favor. What is this trash? None of this tells you our side of the story. These are all videos they put together, so you can watch and learn nothing. Nothing that any of us can show you. Like here. So, I, I don't see a proof yet that the Earth is flat. Did you? Have you ever seen a time lapse of the sun? Does it look like the Earth is rotating backwards and the sun is still? Or does it look like our sun is simply moving across our sky, traveling away from your perspective? Again, but with some inversion. No, it looks to me that the bottom part goes down first, and then the middle, and then this. So, I mean, this is good CGI, which you're going to criticize NASA for, but you're doing the same thing. You can clearly see the sun, not only decreasing its size, but heading towards its next destination, with a slight turn, before it disappears from your line of sight. Yeah, I mean, again, uh, I could show... In fact, I'll do it just for the fun. So here's a video called Perfect Sunset, 60 Minute Ocean Waves, Beach Sunset, No Loop. Okay, these people don't know that I was going to pick out their video to do a sunset to show you what a real sunset looks like. So now let's take a look. You see where the sun is? That's the whole sun. Then what happens? Okay. Now you see it go lower. Now you can only see a part of the sun. And you can now see it go under now it's now half the about quarter of the sun's under now now half the sun is under now a little bit more than half the sun is under it doesn't look like it's going far it looks like it's going under and now that little peak, if you can see in my video, that little peak of the sun is there just a little bit. I'm going to bring it back up. You see that? And then gone. It doesn't look like it's going farther to me. So I'm like, okay, that's an argument 
about the sun, but it has nothing to do with flat earth itself per se, even though I understand everything is interconnected, but that's not, that's not, this is CGI at work and that's a real video of the sun, right? So that's the difference. While Google would make sure when you type in flat earth that nothing like this would ever pop up, many agree the science regarding our sun is far from sun. This is something everyone can experience. They just need to go and look at the sun, go down the beach. I mean, this is just completely against human experience, what they're trying to say. It never looks like it's going further and further away. And anyone who feels that, you've got a spiritual problem maybe because the sun is supposed to set. This is what the Quran uses. The word is ghurub, right? To go down into sunset. It goes down. This is what you... This is what the experience is. We're told that the sun is a massive ball of burning gas 93 million miles away. But if that were true, then all the light that arrives here would be parallel because it's so far away. And it has to be parallel because one of the most often cited supposed globe proofs. We just showed you mathematically the ray of the sun and the shadow that's cast can actually tell you about how to calculate things properly. But he's going to make this claim Again, he makes a claim, but provides no proof. I showed you, for example, the mathematical formulas, didn't I? Does he show you? A he makes a claim without proving it. And that's bizarre. Is this should have been the first time. This should have been the, 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 the perfect time where they could have shown us a formula that whatever you're trying to make a claim about. Sinai's experiment between Alexandria and Syene, by which he calculated the size of the Earth. For that calculation to be accurate, the light must come down parallel. The only problem is that that's not what we see. If you go out on a sunny day with broken cloud, what you'll see is that light comes down at angles, diverging angles. And that means that we can follow those light rays back to the source and triangulate the sun's height above the Earth, proving that the sun isn't millions of miles away. But we can also perform physical experiments that... He just said that. So why doesn't he show you a formula? If he's saying, if what he's saying is true, I mean, this was a, a an expensive documentary, right? You got this was the time for like the 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 flat Earth nerds to come out and show us a blackboard and show us the formulas. Why did you not do that? Proves that these crepuscular rays, as they're called, can only be recreated with a light source that is small and close. It doesn't take a genius to understand that the further the light source goes up, the more the sun rays would spread out and become parallel. The reason you'd even think that the, yeah, the Earth was flat wouldn't it be sunny all the time? I mean, can they ever even die about it? Well, if you'd let me finish, the reason you'd even think the sun would be visible from anywhere on Earth is because of the images they have shown you. No one promoting this bull stands for truth. You can keep believing in your fantasy gas ball 93 million miles away. You can keep believing in your fantasy gas ball. Again, nothing to do with flat Earth. But we keep experimenting to try and figure out what the sun actually is and how close it could be. With a local hotspot, it should be... You're trying to figure this out without math easy to comprehend that the sun is small and close to you. To put that in perspective, imagine a table two meters wide in a completely dark room, and you're holding a, a small but very bright light bulb, 3.4 millimeters across, and you were holding it about 31 centimeters above the table. What you'd see is a circular pool of light directly on the table, you know, beneath the light bulb. Wrong. You know what? I, I did this experiment a while back, but I'll tell you. If you have a torch, the torch wants to show concentrated light so you can actually see what the torch is trying to look at, right? So it's for like if you're in the jungle and you have a torch, you want to be able to see what you're pointing at. The sun isn't like that. The sun is a, a ball, 360 degrees. And so when the light comes, it comes over, it shines over the entire surface that it is facing, okay? Not like a torch. So the torch is a bad example. I mean, it doesn't take a genius to figure out what I'm saying is correct. It's common sense. And he's using something that doesn't fit the model of the sun, a torch. So he's pretending a torch is like the sun. Even though the torch, the tor the tor the torch he's showing here, the light as he's showing is completely fixed in one direction. It's not going out like rays all over the place. So I don't, I mean, this is just, it's, it's very deceptive. 
very deceptive. Okay, let's get started. On the other side of the table, it would be darkness. Now, it seems to our mind that um, if you're on the uh, other side of the table, you would see the light because it's, you know, above the, above the table. But that's not true because on that part of the table, it's in darkness, meaning that the light isn't physically reaching that part of the tabletop. Notice how near the torch is to the table. And obviously, if it's that near, this, this circle would get bigger if the torch went up and bigger and bigger and bigger if the torch went up. Right, because they're trying to make a point that, oh, the other side is completely dark. And because flat earthers don't believe, they believe the, sun, the moon gives off its own light and the sunlight doesn't go to the moonlight. And they feel that it's like, uh, you know, uh, only hitting a certain part of the world, I guess, that the math doesn't work. And you're trying to force this by using a flashlight and the flashlight no matter what you believe, a flashlight that's facing downwards and doesn't have 360 degrees of light. If that was 360 degrees of light, you would see light everywhere in that room. It's that simple. And you could try the experiment yourself. Maybe I can do that experiment here. Let me take a look. So I've turned off the lights and I've gotten something a little bit more stronger than a torch light. Okay. And so let's see what happens. When I take this, I don't know if you can see this, but this is a little bit more than 80 degrees of a torch that is fixated on a certain specific uh, surface nearby. So I'm just going to like just, this is pretty powerful, okay? And you see, everything has become bright. Everything has become bright. Everything in the room is bright. This is off. This is on. So I don't know what the point he's trying to make. But clearly, there's a difference between a 360 degrees of light versus just a surface, uh, 180 degree, meaning a flat surface light focused specifically on a certain surface near it. Okay. And so let me go. Back. Honestly, it seems like they don't know how to recreate experiments, but. Your senses are correct. We're also told that the sun sets. Because as the Earth rotates us away from the Sun, it's actually obscured by the physical curvature of the Earth. That's not what we see. What we see is a local Sun that is taking its local light with it. What happened to the horizon glowing across half of the world? I think Post anyone with a half a brain knows this argument is just foolish. It's against common sense. It's against intuition. The Quran uses the word gharb. Okay? إِذَا تَغْرِبُ shams. When the shams, when the Sun sets. Sunsets are already fading through pollution, dander, chemtrails, and fog. Plus, refraction will always make the sun seem like it's going down, as well as your perspective. Okay, so he just contradicted himself. He said the, refract the, the sun's refraction will make it seem like it's going down. So it's not really going down. It's the refraction that's going down. But he's saying that you will, at the same time, he said, you'll see like the sun is going farther and farther away. So which one is it? Is it the refraction argument or is it that the sun is, sun is going farther and farther away? Here to sink down in your field of view. That's perspective. The further away you get from Oh, the... that's perspective. That's another one they use. That's a word they use in art. It has nothing to do with science, right? That's just perspective. And then they're going to use experiments that are not even justifiably good experiments for it actually showing like they did with the torch, which I think is horrible. Uh, way of trying to express uh, what they're trying to express, which can't be expressed if they had a 360 degree ball in their hands with light. Um, and I didn't have because I just thought of doing this. Otherwise, it would have been even better to make it even more real. But mine is at least closer in a sense. And surely light went everywhere. Lower, it will appear. It doesn't physically change its height, it just appears that way to your eyes, until eventually it will disappear behind the horizon formed by your eye's vanishing point. Your eye has an angular resolution of 0.2 degrees, and anything at that height will disappear beyond the limit of your sight. Many times we can see uh, time-lapse footage of the sun that shows it getting smaller. And the argument against that is, well, we do see the stars, right? So the thing it been disappearing has nothing to do with distance. Okay, the sun is a is a is 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 a gigantic fireball. 
whether no matter what you believe about it. So it's not just that it just becomes farther away and smaller and smaller. We see the stars. We see the moon. So, uh, yeah, that's not a valid argument to me at all. As he moves away from us. Now, that's not always the case. Since the sun is traveling around the North Pole, the closer you are to the North, the less you'll see the size change. But from locations beyond the equator, you actually... Actually, you know what's so funny? If you remember that video, you could go back to it. Look how big the sun is. Sometimes the sun is really small when it's right above you and so big during sunset. So when it's farthest away, it looks so big. And when it's right above you, it looks not so big. And the other thing is that you, as the sun comes down, you can see it go under the clouds. Absolutely. See the sun's sun. All of these arguments he's giving... I don't see what it has something to do or how it's something to do with directly with the flat earth. Why is it change? And that could never ever happen if the sun was 93 million miles away. You wouldn't see the sun change at all. Our eyes cannot see farther than what they were designed to see. But that is no reason to keep them closed. There's also an effect that occurs under certain conditions called atmosphere. So no matter what you believe about how far the sun is, everyone can agree stars are farther than the sun. And the stars are, in a way from perception, smaller than the sun. Yet we see the stars, but according to you, this big ball of fire, as it moves away, we can't see it. Atmospheric lensing, where the sheer amount of atmosphere, as well as the rain between you and the sun, acts like a lens and a prism, magnifying it greatly, which leads to another observation proof that the sun's setting is an optical effect. As so he showed that example of the pencil, and then he said the reason the sun becomes bigger is because of that refraction that occurs when you put a pencil inside of water. The pencil didn't become bigger. Such times when the sun is setting over the sea and it seems as though it's half hidden by the horizon. Then you can zoom in with a high powered zoom camera and see that it's actually still above the horizon. It's just an optical illusion. No, see, that, that, that's, another, that's another good lie. That's another good lie. I'll tell you what it is. It's called a double sunset. When you see the sun set, and if you stand up at that moment, you'll see the sun fully. When you zoom in, it's like you're standing closer, right? It's like you're standing closer. So even though from your vantage point, it's vanished, not because you can't see, but because there's a curve. And when there's a curve from your vantage point where you're looking, okay, when you're looking, it's, it's, it's vanished from here, but because it's gone under, when you move your lens closer, you're, it's like you're moving forward. This is exactly like the double sunset experiment, where, which anyone can do. Be by the beach when the sun is gone down. Stand up, you'll still see the sun. Why? Because you changed your... Uh, or you go up a mountain, for example. So you ch or, or you do anything to get closer. So when you get closer, you'll be able to see the sun again. But again, not for long. Even that camera will eventually see the sun go down. And eventually it'll come to a point where even the best telescope will just see nothing in front of it because the sun has gone on around the curve. And, you know, it would be better than if they were just talking theoretically if they actually did a proper experiment. But, you know, anyway. Pay attention to the sun rays here. This alone proves our local sun. And so do these shadows. So what about the moon? We all witness the moon only illuminating the local clouds around it. That is because it is also a local light, but one with opposite effects from the sun. As we can all agree, shade from the sun is cooler than direct sunlight. But did you know... This is actually proven to be false, but I'm not even going to go there, okay? Um, the moon's shade is actually warmer than direct moonlight. The moon produces cold light, something the science priests must have forgotten to teach us all about in school. Not only that... Right, the science priest, scientist priest didn't teach about the, the cold light, okay? This is, but where's the formulas? Where's the proof, right? So, but at times we can see stars through the moon, proving it is not some solid rock. The problem is they have these experiments that they do individually, but then you have other people doing the same experiments and it fails, and they're saying it's failed. 238,900 miles away. In the 60s, true science regarding the moon was the shadow band topic of its era. I would consider myself to be an ordinary, humble person who wants to serve mankind with what we man has stood for from the beginning of consciousness with truth and understanding of the world. 
So now one thing, you have a theory about the moon, and we expect to be able to get observable facts about the moon fairly soon. Um, what is your theory? Well, uh, it is by now rather more than a theory. Uh, 10 or 11 years ago, I stated to various scientists that the moon is not a piece of rock, but it is uh, plasma, cosmic plasma. Gravitational theories are up and a new concept of the cosmos and of its laws have to be evolved. This fact will eventually... Okay, no one has ever called the moon a plasma. They try to say it's a plasma because they say it's a disc, which has to do with mythology and the Babylonian magis, okay? I made certain predictions which were already confirmed in 1958, and the situation now is coming close to a complete confirmation. What will be the result if you are proved to be correct in your theories? The result will be uh, profound and decisive, because if the moon is a plasma, no man will ever land on it. The Americans and Russians are thinking of landing men on it. Oh, well, that will never happen. <laughs> People actually believe they walked on the moon, talked with Nixon, played golf, drove a car, and planted a flag. If you really believe that Neil Armstrong took the first step, then why do you give any credit to the cameraman already there are we? <laughs> These guys were all U.S. The uh, cameraman point, that was on the vehicle. So I don't see why that's a big deal. But I will share with you something that uh, is interesting from the Quran, right? And that is in Surah Al-Qamar, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, In Surah Al-Qamar, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, اِقْتَرَبَتِ السَّعَةِ بَعْدِ عَوْضِ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ بِسْمِ اللَّهِ الرَّحْمَنِ الرَّحِيمِ The hour has come near. وَالشَّقَّ الْقَمَرِ And the moon has been dug out. Shaqqa means to split. As we know, the Prophet pointed to the moon and it got split. So that's the original explanation of this ayah. But the wordings of the Qur'an, that the hour has come near because the moon has been dug out seems to validate the idea that the moon would be dug out at some point. Now, is this qat'i explanation of the text? Meaning, is that what the text is exactly telling us? No, not necessarily. It's an interpretation. It's ta'wil. So it's not at the higher level. It's at the middle level of interpretation. But it is a valid interpretation. It does hold some credence as interpretation. Okay. Military men coerced into acting. They wanted the money and power that came with the deal, of course. The problem was, they were terrible. Of course, they wanted the power and the money. And what are you doing? They couldn't even pretend to be excited. What am I doing? Same thing. I want something. I have an ideology. I have a certain conviction. Everyone's promoting their belief systems or, or themselves. Knowing they were lying to the world. But the show had to go on. Michael Collins and Neil Armstrong rarely spoke in public about it. But there was one man not shy about lying to your face. The spokesperson for the Apollo deception. It's my pleasure to present Colonel Edwin Holden. No handshake, hug, smile. Their facial expressions are similar to those experiencing constipation, not celebrating an accomplishment. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, it is with a great sense of pride as an American and with humility as a human being that I say to you today, what no men have been privileged to say before. We walked on the moon. I mean, they couldn't pay them enough to look up and smile? Society has always debated these planned Apollo events since day one, never imagining... This is all, uh, like, is he a psychologist? Then, that almost 50 years later, they haven't had the balls to fake another. As a tattooer, I talk to hundreds of people a month, and... People are actually really starting to wake up with everything that's going on right now. I mean, of course, with everything that's going on with all the famous celebrities and everything, and your famous YouTube videos. People are sick of the lies. This is the biggest deception. It's the biggest deception. Like the people that use, it's like projection, right? You, what you yourself are doing, you're like projecting on other people. Ever. The globe, the spinning ball globe is the biggest deception. If NASA was legit, literally all they would have to do is one. Why? Why don't the Christians talk about the uh, the the mathematicians that were Christians or the Muslims that were Christians? Why? Why are they attacking NASA? Why are they making NASA a big deal? This is a big deceptive thing. I mean, th there's something behind why attacking NASA. Take one of their satellites, zoom in. And what's interesting is these are not even practicing Christians, right? So what is their stake in this? Like, I can understand a good Christian trying to say this. What is the stake of these uh, artists and these famous people trying to do this? On someone in Australia, upside down, driving a car. Or in the ocean, swimming upside down. That's all they would have to do. Just zoom in. 
But they, they won't do it. They'll never do it. I think it's hilarious that NASA will straight up tell you to destroy the technology to go to the moon. I'd go to the moon in a nanosecond. Uh, the problem is we don't have the technology to do that anymore. We used to, but we uh, destroyed that technology, and uh, it's a painful process to build it back again. But they destroyed the technology, and they can't go back. This is the type of uh, snippets that you use in this social media to make a point. It's just, man, this is a lot of money and a lot of time to create a lot of deception is all I got to say. It's like that the earth is flat. The Google, you know, the earth is flat, what Google was saying, but the actual point was something else and then they're just manipulating it. I, I, it's, it's a very high level of deception. It's ridiculous. There's an interview with Buzz Aldrin, actually, where he's uh, being interviewed by a little girl. Her question was... Why has nobody been to the in such a long time? <laughs> That's not an eight-year-old's question. <laughs> That's my question. I want to know what I think I know. Because we didn't go there, and, and that's the way it happened. After 50 years of lying to humanity and perpetrating this giant fraud, he's sick of lie. And he, his conscience, in a moment of humility, and his conscience wouldn't let him lie to this little eight-year-old girl. This silly globe model with water magically attached to it, spinning at a thousand miles an hour, shooting around the sun at 66,000 miles an hour, and rocketing through the universe at half a million miles an hour is just the goofiest, silly thing that I've ever heard in my life. They want you to think you're... Why don't they talk about the geocentric model? Why is it the heliocentric and the flat Earth model that are the only choices? Why don't they, why don't they say something about the mathematical formulas of the geocentric model? Monkey man accident created by nothing that exploded from a big bang that was created not by scientists by a priest mind you while they steal 58 million dollars a day in taxpayers money to show you cartoons cgi they, they just have to show you enough. uh like no cgi was used in this video right hollywood and magic tricks and for you to believe the nonsense it shocks me how many people actually believe they're floating above our heads? It's all filmed here on Earth. Outer space is a fantasy. You know, Earth is a stationary plane. Google bubbles in space. You can literally see bubbles coming up from these astronauts' helmets. It's ridiculous. When I when I saw it, I was like, this is this is a joke. So uh, many times during um, spacewalks outside the International Space Station, you can see air bubbles rising up. Can you touch on how there are air bubbles in space? Um, air so yeah, like a lot of times during the footage... That does not look like air bubbles. It just looks like white, um... Debris. Debris. That's the yeah, You can see bubbles coming up out of the helmets or kind of from underneath you. Um, how do you explain bubbles in space? Yeah, often, uh, on the outside of the space station, it'll liberate little pieces of, uh, you know... It's a really harsh environment out there, the outside of the space station can speed up pretty good. And sometimes you'll use those little flecks of pain for something that you might have disrupted floating away from the suit. And, uh, you know, that's generally what that is. I've never seen any kind of air bubble anywhere. Could it, could it be that you're filming in an underwater pool and you're not really out there? Notice none of this proves the earth is flat yet. Not one argument. Not one argument shows the earth is flat. Just a bunch of, for this, you know, rational arguments that are not empirically proven or emotional arguments that just are ludicrous. And I've seen enough lies in this video already that it's like amazing that Muslim brothers and sisters are telling me, you got to watch this, the level. It's going to prove to you, Sheikh Omar, that the earth is flat. And because if you're sincere, you're going to see that, no, I see this as deception. No different from NASA itself. You know what you can do? You can sell the same pictures yourself because they are public domain. 
Absolutely. They should be free to the taxpayers. They are free. Why are you selling it for $40? You can do whatever you want. Well, you're doing it a disjust by, by ripping off the taxpayers. You know what? Hey, thanks for coming. Once people start realizing that we've been lied to on a grand scale, everything from the government to our schools, it all just comes crumbling down. It shocks me how many people actually believe they're floating above our heads. I've seen... You know... Uh... ...in the International Space Station on YouTube and the astronauts floating about in it. How they're orbiting the Earth at 17,000 miles per hour. <laughs> Can't do that unless you're in outer space. <laughs> Practice makes perfect. Give me another It's week. as simple as using a zero-g plane and strapping a harness to their belt. Then, just like Batman movies, they remove the wires using a computer. At times, the manipulation reveals itself. Green screen and blue screen technology cannot always be flawless. How can you keep denying this trickery? Here we see Europe's space agency at NASA studios using a blue screen with grids. This technology has been used for decades. It works best for 3D and live manipulation. It's funny. Once NASA was caught red-handed, they produced a couple of senseless videos eight months later, trying to pretend like they always use them for science experiments. Knowing damn well, it was too late. Why do clowns defend them? There is no chance you could remove the background. These people lie to your face in the hope that you will not do your own research. Is this flat earth argument or just emotional, like, I'm upset with you and I'm upset with the world and I'm upset with NASA and I'm upset because of the way they do things. It just doesn't make sense. NASA knows that most are too lazy to dig through its massive rabbit hole. Yet, in the meantime, they just love to rub it in your face. They steal $52 million per day from American taxpayers just to create a fantasy display of men orbiting their spinning pear-shaped space testicle Earth. Their green screens are awesome. When they are live and something glitches, their reactions are always priceless. I'm not sure why you globeheads keep defending all of this. Are you waiting on NASA to finally come forward? Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. It has a lot of psychological techniques, so this is a good one. Dear citizens of America, we here at NASA have been lying to you all since the 60s about our projects, operations, and missions into outer space. We have never been higher than lower Earth orbit. Right now, we only can fly in Earth orbit. That's the farthest that we can go. Every image we have shown you is CGI. Our films are mostly done in an underwater buoyancy facility. We have funneled millions of dollars per day to show you cartoons and false illusions. And we are truly very sorry. We will repay all taxpayers back the trillions of dollars we have stolen. This will be divided evenly between the citizens of America as well as the building... What they should be doing is what scientists do. Sit down, give you formulas, give you proof, give you white papers, give you the experiments. This is propaganda. Average stricken towns and cities all across America. As this department has finally come to an end. Isn't it weird that every space documentary, all the series, I had them all, Joe had them all, we watch them all the time. I tried to remember all the about a neuton star and a super hypernova. I was deep into space. Beyond Venus, 93 million miles from the sun, is Earth. It's great oceans forming the clouds and air currents which warm and irrigate the planet. I thought it was better than people with because I knew so much about space. And every now and then I'd watch all that and wonder and wonder, what? This is all cartoons. And every now and then I think to myself, it's weird that we're not watching any actual footage of space. It's all CGI. All DVDs on space are all CGI. There's nothing real. And the, the original are, are all black and white, and then they put in the colors. Different organizations do it differently, but like for oxygen red, for uh, hydrogen blue, like and then they put it in because most of the pictures in space are black and white. And uh, they're part of the public domain. They take those pictures that are part of the public domain and then they put color in it. So it's a lot of uh, industries do that. They do that in the medical industry too. They've been doing it for years. Everyone watches that, they believe it, the narration is on programming. What's above us and what we're on, we're being lied to. Do we have Hubble? Why would you point it at the- If CGI is deception, then they're definitely using CGI. Earth, they get some awesome shots of where we live. All the pictures and images from space are CGI. None of them are real. We haven't gone past that. What, are you telling me that that's okay? Then this is the argument like, because uh, this is wrong, therefore this must be right. Because because Christianity is wrong, therefore Islam must be right. Right? Because NASA is wrong, therefore uh, flat earth is right. And it's a pity that that's what they've 
they've kind of like pitched themselves. All these Christians and every single Muslim that says NASA, NASA, NASA means only one thing to me. You're listening to all these videos of these people and you're getting NASA, NASA, NASA. But you're not going to talk about Al-Biruni. You're not going to talk about Al-Tusi. You're not going to talk about all the Muslim scientists, all the Muslim observatories. You learn about your own history for heaven's sake. You know, you know more about saying NASA than you know about your own history. Okay, we can just gloss over that and they admit that they're all CGI, except for one in 1972, which is fake. And one picture, they say one is real, 1972, all the rest of CGI, like where are the pictures of Earth from space? I want to see a picture, I want to see tens of thousands of them, I want to see the sun over here and the moon over there, There's, people should have posters all, all over the world, people should have these epic pictures of the Earth from space with the moon over here and the sun over there and the planets, there's none. Literally zero. They do sometimes exaggerate, like claiming they used a NASA camera 1.6 million miles away to take this alleged video of the dark side of the moon. It doesn't take a genius to see how undeniably computer generated this image is. And yet, you think we are the moronic ones? I would rather be thought as a moron for not trusting criminals than a sellout and a traitor for defending them. The reality what, is the things that come out of your mouth, are you saying something that a defense attorney would say? Or are you saying something that a prosecuting attorney would say? I, when it comes to the government, that criminal, that's like John Gotti, I'm saying that a prosecuting attorney would say. I'm not saying... You know, NASA is bad. The government is bad. It's very negative. You know, I mean, where's the proof? Like, if I'm trying to prove the earth is spherical, I'm going to say, okay, the Quran says this. Muslim scientists said this. I'm going to say, okay, look at nature. I don't need to blame the government. I don't need to play the straw man argument, right? I don't need to blame anybody else. I just give you the arguments. This is the argument. We'll prove it. We'll prove it. It's a criminal. Without a doubt, whatever's coming from the government, you need, I need some I need the kind of evidence that, that would shut down a case. If I don't see the evidence, why would I believe it? What is gravity? I have no idea. Okay, next question. <laughs> So you're telling me gravity is strong enough to hold oceans onto it, battling inertia from the spin. So gravity's holding oceans, and inertia's trying to pull it out and make it fling. Skyscrapers would fling off the earth, but this gravity's holding these, it's so strong, it's holding those, but I can't hold a helium balloon. Things that are... Um, that's a silly argument again. Uh, let me ask you this question. If there is a little ant in your car, and your car is going 100 miles an hour, uh, will that ant fall down? No, it won't. I've had, uh, once or twice, I've seen a bug or an ant, or a bumblebee, even in the car window, or somewhere, and I'm going at 60 miles, 70 miles, it doesn't feel a thing. So, that's not even the issue. If I'm on a plane, okay, you've all been on a plane, you can feel the bumps of the plane. Why? Because there's, the plane isn't as big as an ant in the car. The ant, the ant is much smaller compared to the car. Now, imagine the earth. So, now, uh, the plane is going, but if I throw a ball to my son, and my son throws the ball back to me, we throw, we throw. It's going to be a normal uh, catch ball game, just like if you're on Earth, even though the plane is moving. If the plane was bigger, like if you were on a cruise in the ship out in the sea. The, the 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 ship is moving 30 miles 40 miles but people are playing golf people are doing whatever they do right so i don't think this whole this whole like oh we're going so fast in space yeah everything is moving or less dense go up things that are more dense go down it has nothing to do with gravity where's gravity out with butterflies you think that if gravity so strong it's holding skyscrapers down, we would be flat on the ground. There is gravity all the way out to the moon and beyond. <laughs> Long before the theory of gravity was a glimmer in Newton's imagination, the natural physics of density and buoyancy already perfectly explain why apples fall down. Objects fall or rise based on their relative density to the medium surrounding them. Apples fall because they are denser than... Let me explain something. The most documented in physics, the most documented studied PhD after PhD are the mathematical formulas, are the mathematical formulas around the laws of motion that Newton got from the Muslims, by the way, but the laws of motion that Newton wanted, okay, or that he, he tried to uh, promote on his name. For whatever they're saying, and for whatever the laws of motion Newton has, there's a whole mathematical basis of it, that if you throw a rock into a water, 
based upon the size of the rock, the density of the rock, the type of rock, the based upon how it enters the water, the type of droplets that would come out, and so on and so forth. These people are just saying things, concepts, ideas that ha that has no study. There's no field. There's no mathematics. There's no experiments. This is just thoughts, right? This is less denser than this. You know what is so interesting is the is the, I wish I could show you this verse of the Quran, which talks about de de the the air. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala said, "Ka yasadu ila sama," that the the chest of the person that leaves Islam or is not accept truth becomes shrinked like as if he's going towards the heavens. Because what happens is less oxygen when you go upwards, right? Every plane says that that mask, I guess that's fake too to these people, right? That the the whole that you can lose oxygen when you're in the in in the in the plane. I think they think that's fake. Um anyway the point being that uh Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions this phenomenon. Now, why is this important? This is important because when we're understanding what is, how how the atmosphere is layered up, is what partly tells us how, what some force, and of course we don't understand gravity at all really, but there is something, some force uh, that is pulling, keeping us on earth and keeping the whole of uh, the uh, creation of Allah on earth that is supposed to be here call it gravity or call it whatever you will in the air well he leave a little surprise because they are lighter no gravity necessary this is why raindrops fall down through the air and air bubbles rise up through water everything seeks its relative density and rises or falls until settling accordingly this is why a tiny pebble sinks to the bottom of the ocean but gigantic cruise ships and aircraft carriers stay afloat on the surface because even though a pebble is so small its mass relative to its volume its density is more than water so it sinks and even though a cruise ship is so large, its mass, relative to its volume, is less than water, so it floats. If Newton's apple had landed in a puddle, he would have seen the apple only fell through the air because it was denser than the air, but then floated on top of the water because it was less dense than water. The natural physics of density and buoyancy was understood and agreed upon for centuries before they changed our textbooks and started NASA. All our space information is coming from NASA. NASA. Yeah. Warner Von Braun was the director of all six moon missions, and he's a f Is that not a comic book? That's a f comic comic book. Comic book. I'm sorry to say I'm leaving you to join the elite version paper push in the United States of Again, which is interesting because NASA has the Nazis and who are the biggest believers in the flat earth and the Antarctica and the UFO and the Magi and the swastika? The Nazis. Version paper good. My people in Germany, all they want is freedom and peace. We want to welcome you to the US of A. We must divert our attention. I'm going to make so much fucking money. It's crazy. To brainwash a nation, you will be on a mission. I want to bring my technology of airplane models. I want to work as well. I want to see the Can I please see a formula of something that shows that the Earth is flat? People need to get the indoctrination started. If people believe an airplane can go to the moon, you might be able to do it. To brainwash a nation, I will need help. You will be on a mission. Who is the United States of America? And action. Ah, oh, jeez. Who hired these guys? Jesus Christ, these guys can't die. They fall for it, though. People will fall for it. These people must know. In the heavens, declare the glory of God. This firmament, for sure, if he's happy with it. People must know. People have to know. This big bang and fluffy puffy uh, pixie fairy dust and, and unicorn farts and all of a sudden uh, consciousness just just came out of that no it was designed i can i hope you all see that how all of this um is just emotional content in very little substance claims that sound rational but have no foundation claims that sound rational but have no empirical foundation it's not an accident. Everything according to the bogus Darwinian theory of evolution, all of it points to a godless, atheist, demonic, demoncrat lie. NASA is a corporation, and they are the same people who run Disney. In fact, they are very, very similar, because what they do is they entertain people. They're not teaching people. Uh, they don't want people to know the truth about the cosmos. They're entertaining them with CGI images. Every image you see, image, not photo, every single one of them, all of those are computer-generated images. They are not photos. Everyone you see on Google is a CGI image. It is not a photo. And you can't tell that they are CGI. Either there's two things wrong with you. You are either or you are mentally deranged. You do not have control of your own mind. 
you, your mind has been indoctrinated. By the way, I found this very interesting. They do the one eye thing in this video over here. Or you are mentally deranged. You do not have control of your own mind. That's the one eye with the NASA in it. But they're using it in this video to, you know, say that you're deranged and all. And this is the eyebrow of the person, I guess. You, your mind has been indoctrinated, it has been brainwashed, and you've been duped, and you're still believing Santa Claus and the upside down spinning Santa Ball, which the Jesuits invented in 1542. Prior to 1542, every single culture, all our intelligent ancestors will be rolling in their graves, knowing that this stupid progeny actually think they live. Everything before modernity believed in geocentric Earth. That is a fact. No one believed in the flat earth. On a spinning road that people bow down to for their false ideology. Zoom up to Venus, zoom up to Mars, and you'll see that they are lights, they are stars. Hence, all the intelligent pre Copernican astrologers, Ptolemaic astrologers like myself, taught that all the planets are wandering stars, they are luminous bodies. Just as the Egyptians said, just as the Greeks and the Mayans and the Aztecs said, just as... I would say to some degree this is just a war of semantics. Oh, it's not planets. It's a, a ball of fire or a ball of light. It's just semantics. But, I mean, ultimately, uh, where is the evidence that they have, you know, for all these claims? It's no evidence. What they're doing is they're using trickery by the background video as he's speaking to make their point. But it's not actual, it's a deceptive point because there's there's nothing to actually prove anything. Our intelligent ancestors said, in all the stars, as they say, in every constellation, are all at different depths. By millions of light years, how come for thousands and thousands and thousands of years of hurtling through the sky, there is no distortion, no difference in luminosity of stars, we're supposed to be flying at breakneck speeds through the galaxy, and yet the same boring stars keep turning. Uh, let me just answer by It's the same boring sun and the same boring moon, and your same negativity of calling the sun and the moon in the space something negative, subhanAllah. But it's it's the same moon and sun. What are you talking about? Turning over our flat, stationary, plain Earth forever and ever and ever and ever. And this is what happens when you become reductionist, right? You don't see the interconnected. If the if the universe was changing in the way that he would want it to change, then we would not be able to accumulate knowledge over time because we needed these things for navigation and to, we wouldn't be able to navigate uh, uh, after every 100, 200 years. I, I don't know what this person's talking about. So we are not moving. We're supposed to be traveling at, get this number in your head, 66,600 mile an hour, 666. <laughs> that's how fast the Earth is orbiting. If you are good, that's what you are. You are stupid. Stupid beyond your wildest imagination. That's why we have a horizon, because it's horizontal. That's why we have sea level, because the sea is level. It's not curvy. You cannot call it sea level. You will call it... I'll argue, it's semantics, it's words, right? So I'll say, okay, there's sunrise and sunset. So I mean, if you want to argue words, if there's a sunset, then the earth is not flat. C curve. That's why we have tectonic plates. And why is it not flat? Because somebody else is then seeing the sun rise when we're seeing the sunset. Tectonic bowls, because those tectonic plates are just that. Flat plates. Check out the Suez Canal, 120 miles, no curvature. It never overflows, it never drains. And to all those astrologers out there who think they are astrologers, teaching heliocentrism, like uh, Laura Eisenhower, the uh, granddaughter of her grandfather, uh, the president. This is called, let's create a boogeyman, right? Let's create NASA as a boogeyman. Let's take uh, some president's daughter and let's make her the boogeyman and then become the heroes by attacking the supposed villain. Why don't you just talk about flat earth? How about just being straightforward? This is not, this is our airwatch. This is like, you're just shooting everywhere like a machine gun without talking about the subject at hand. The US, uh, calling itself a heliocentric astrologer. No such thing exists. I was very young age, wondering why the heck did I land in the Eisenhower family? Yeah. I was faced with the opportunity to go to Mars, and people wonder why the heck didn't you go to Mars? But my intuition told me from 
really recalling a, a, a youth filled with a lot of insight about what I was here to do was to not go anywhere. That is Lyra, you are a false prophet. The line going from the AC to the DC is called the line of the earth, and it never moves. AC to DC, ascendant to descendant, that's called the line of the earth, according to the astrologers of ancient. And that never moves, proving that there is no movement of the earth calculated in any astrological chart reading that you do. You never account the movement or the position of the earth in relation to any of these planets, because it's that line of the earth which we call the horizon. Speaking of horizons, some guy, he filmed a mountain. He was flying over Texas and he used his camera to film a mountain. This mountain was supposed to be hidden by 35 miles of curvature with the current circumference of the earth that we're given. So I'm just sitting straight up, it's just right there. It's not hidden by 35 miles of curvature. It's, it's crazy. As soon as flat earthers found out about P900 cameras that, that are so let me just uh, show this to you, right? If you're on a flat earth, then how does the height affect what you see? If you are flat or if you are high, you will see the same amount, like in this case, this tree, right? So the flat surface sees both the same. Over here, the person that is on the ground can no longer see the tree but the person who is on height can see a bigger part of the tree now i think everybody knows that you see more farther when you are higher up for example in mountains you see more of the earth compared to if you're flat so the all these arguments that he's giving it's just uh doesn't jive with me at all see a boat disappear with your naked eye and that used to be proof alone that used to be proof for the curvature of the earth but now you can watch the boat disappear with your naked eye and then you can pull up this camera and you can zoom in on the boat that you just watched disappear then you can bring it right back into full view perfectly that's actually proves the earth is curved he's not realizing this because it's just like if you're on a mountain, you can see more. And if you're on the surface, you can't see more. If you move forward, you could see that amount that he's gone down. Even in this picture, for example, the boat's still under, but he still sees a little bit more because it's like he's brought, he's just proven the curve by this. Because if you're, if the world, if the earth is flat and you can see the stars, but you can't see this, and it, and then if you get closer, you see it, that shows that there is a curvature taking place. Perfectly visible. It's crazy. There's no camera tricks. There's no illusions involved. Nothing. It's just perfectly back into view. There's flat earth proofs coming out all the time, every other day, every, every, I'll just, it's just a matter of if you can find it or not. If, if it's going to surface in the right areas where people can share it. You know, they're trying to censor this stuff nonstop. There's just a mission to keep this stuff buried. Yeah, there's a mission to keep Magi Flat Earth buried. I believe that. I got mad love for all the Flat Earthers, fam. Since day one, everybody's been doing their part, putting in work, and just picking up where, the, where they're finding slack, they'll pick it up, you know what I mean? Like, there's no spot in Flat Earth that is not covered. They're covering their zone, their quadrants, and they're just taking care of business, man. And if it wasn't for you, if it wasn't for all of us, we wouldn't be where we're at with the Flat Earth thing, man. They wouldn't be so scared. They wouldn't be trying to cover it up at every turn and stop it everywhere we look. Each and every single Flat Earther out there has played their part. And we wouldn't be where we're at if it wasn't for you. We wouldn't be heavily censored. They wouldn't be scared to debate us. They wouldn't be... Right, that's why you got this expensive video going on. ...trying to censor us at every turn if it wasn't for you guys and you wonderful women exposing Flat Earth with all your might, all your power, all the glory to God. What a wonderful world we live on. So beautiful. There's pilots coming out all the time, too. And they're attesting to the fact that you can't find any curvature. Ask any airline pilot what the shape of the Earth is. When they're done laughing at you, they'll tell you it's a sphere. That's not that, yeah. Actually, not true. I have talked to Muslim pilots, alhamdulillah. And soon, inshallah, I'm hoping I'll be talking to a Muslim sailor. I've talked to Muslim pilots. They're like, yeah, it's, it's very clear that there's a curvature. So am I going to trust the source of Muslims that come to my Jummah khutbah? Or am I going to trust what these people sliced and diced uh, in this video? The ground looks fast like it's standing still. Why don't you, as a Muslim, go talk to a Muslim pilot? That'll be a better source for you than this stupid video. Did you notice any curvature while we were up there? Uh, no. No? What did you, what did you see while we were up there? Uh, the slip was bad. Boy, that's 
Most pilots know their plane is flying over a plane, a stationary plane, always a smooth and level flight. We never feel the plane dipping its nose down. We only feel the landing. Which flight route matches reality in your mind? If you chose the left, you may need medical attention. Everything beneath you while flying is level and motionless, just as expected. Flying over a stationary plane. Sometimes it's hard to see far ahead of you, but other times. We can probably see the Rockies from Kansas. Wow. Clear. It's a clear day, but if it's smoky or easy, obviously you can't see much. The world is, is so generous in its beauty, and, and you do your best to, to take pictures of it. It's just, it's just flat and gorgeous. Silly Hector not. You took the words right out of my mouth. Earth is flat and gorgeous, but they trick you to believe something else. Not every pilot instantly connects the dots and keeps quiet. Sometimes, it can hit them 25 years later. Better late than never. Most pilots may have skipped over their training manuals. In their flight dynamic summary, section 112 explains all you'll need to know about what you're flying over. The military knows the same thing. NASA admits it as well. In tons of documents available to the public. They just assumed nobody would pay attention. This comes from an Army Research Laboratory. This one's from the CIA. There's another one from NASA. This report documents the definitions of linear aircraft model for the rigid aircraft of consistent mass flying over flat, non-rotating Earth. This comes right from our own government. Now, I have available 44 documents. What do I get to do, sir? Uh, you can go to the city Which is this person on here. The right line is a law that's passed that we can't teach anything about the development. We have to teach the truth of how things are. From the documents to the imagery, they are not flying around a curve heading to outer space. They are flying over a stationary flat plane. Stop falling for the illusions. Every rocket goes up and then levels out. Most of NASA's rockets launch from Florida and head towards the Bermuda Triangle. Well, besides the occasional. They're not shy about showing the truth in plain sight. 125 alleged miles up and they show you our level horizon with a local sun. Then quickly switch cameras to their fisheye lens as if that didn't just happen. You have to pick one. You can't have both. Looks as if their cameras go about as high as most hot air balloons do before they burst. Who do they think they're fooling? But let me guess. You saw the curvature in the images from satellites. The thousands of magical orbiting aluminum tin cans floating in space. It's all animation and games until one comes crashing down on your squad. Many crashed satellites have been reported the world over. And the one thing they all have in common is giant helium balloons attached to them. Of course, satellite technology is real. We get our weather information communication equipment i've heard flat earthers tell me it's not real so this person saying it's real the others are saying it's not real and even some internet service from them look up google loon for example it's not that they wouldn't use the magical floating satellites if they could it's that they don't physically exist nor does the globe they have been sending these up one at a time since it all began i will allow them to explain it and you got a patent on that in 1950 and those early balloons were so large they didn't have any way to launch them except they actually launched them from aircraft carriers modern scientific ballooning was born it's also the genesis for NASA's newly developed super pressure balloon. The, whole, the reason for super pressure balloon is they have absolutely stable altitude day night, and it doesn't matter how cold the atmosphere is, they are sealed. So your shape is always the same, you always displace the same amount of air, and therefore you have the same amount of buoyancy all the time. This day to night altitude stability allows super pressure balloons. And this Hi, I'm Matt, and this is NASA Now. NASA has been using balloons for science research for over 30 years. The exploration that can be done on balloons is continuing to grow. Standard balloon that I fly is about 660 feet long when it's made. So, when it's so if NASA is using balloons, that's proving the Earth is flat? I don't understand. What's the point? I mean, obviously, balloons are economical. They're cheap way to take something up, you know? it's And it's not like they're hiding it. So what are you assuming? What are you reading into this? inflated it's over 400 feet tall by 440 feet wide think of a dome stadium that's how big my balloon ball so let me get this straight it is now public knowledge that they sent up satellites on massive helium filled balloons as you should know nasa is the it's interesting words and now they know and now they figured it out okay largest consumer of helium in the world for obvious reasons but the issue with society is that they never critically think 
Just think for a second here. If these are sent up to provide the world with all of the important information we need, and I'm sure the entire process is expensive and difficult to accomplish, then please explain to me what in a flat world do these pathetic animations do for you? Do they make you happy inside? Are they so super duper cool that you cannot see past the obvious CGI? The fact of the matter is everything NASA sends up on a balloon simply hovers above our motionless Earth. That is why they rarely speak about orbiting satellites, and of course, they never show footage. Here is some footage of a random evening with a man, the moon, and his Nikon P900. Notice anything floating up there? Forget it, Bart. It's so bright out, you can't see anything in the sky except the Fox satellite. Another remarkable fact. Yeah, they're gonna use Homer Simpson cartoons. Interesting. fact about NASA's balloon launches is that many are launched from Antarctica. Is it because we cannot travel past certain parallels to witness their launches with our own eyes? What else are they hiding from us over there? It would be nice if someone was allowed to truly explore Antarctica again. It sure has been a while since the last guy. Greetings to you, my young friend. Our very distinguished guest for this evening is Admiral Richard E. Byrd. I must say that Admiral Byrd... This, is one, this was one of the things that clicked with me as far as looking into the path of occults. Because this Admiral Byrd is the one who went to Antarctica and said he got captured by UFOs and they gave him a message. And he saw the swastikas that now the Jews are also wearing. Um, and, you know, they, they, they say that he found out this part of the whole conspiracy that they have, that the Antarctica is actually much bigger than uh, what we think it is. Our guest tonight is not only our greatest living explorer, but he's been an inspiration to countless Americans. Admiral Bird, is there any unexplored land left on this earth that might appeal to adventurous young Americans? Uh, yes, there is. Strangely enough, there's left in the world today an area as big as the United States that's never been seen by a human beings. And it's, uh, I think it's quite astonishing that there should be an area as big as that unexplored. But more important than that, it's, uh, it has to do with the future uh, of the nation, for those to come after us, or even uh, during our lifetime. Because it happens to be an untouched reservoir of natural resources. Yeah, he just meant that as a... Je and anybody would say if there's a land that's unexplored and its resources have been frozen, never taken, it's going to be a great place for a country to go. And if you actually watch the entire uh, interview, that was his intent, was saying that there's an area that has a lot of resources and we should be able to use those. An area as big as the United States has never been seen by human beings. Since late 2014, one of the biggest things I've heard, the Earth is flat. Why don't you find the edge and fall off? This is a self-made millionaire. He's going to talk about flat earth. Why don't you make up an expedition and gather people and go find the edge and take a picture of the edge? Well, my response is, can you fall off the edge of a lake, a pond, an ocean? Let's see if you have any imagination left in that brain of yours. And pretend this is all the water in the world. This is the 71% covered earth-filled pond. All the water in the world. So let's just say this is trillions upon trillions upon trillions of gallons. You've got the continent, the islands in the middle. In the center where all compass this point, you can circumnavigate, circle the lake or the pond left or right. But as you venture outwards towards the banks, towards outer space, what happens? Once you pass that 60th degree parallel and you hit the ice wall, the ice cliff of Antarctica, what happens? Do you fall off the edge? Is there an edge here? Because we know the physics of water is defined and maintained level if you've been paying attention. And also, water must be contained. It is contained. We climb up the banks and we keep going outward, southward. What happens in their control when millions of people travel on the 60th parallel? They knew this was going to get out. They knew people were going to wake up. What if Star Wars is true? What if this extra terrestrial, these extra terrains, they're telling us the truth, minus the back in the space? Because they got to put a Hollywood spin on it, don't they? Star Wars, Star Trek. What if you Gophers can have. And that is the key that they want them. This is where the whole Magi occultism takes you. The UFOs, the occults. There's somebody there. There's somebody behind that wall. Somebody's going to come, some alien, some big, giant, intelligent civilization's going to come out. And that's, that leads to the hollow earth, right? And white supremacy for that matter. Have your Star Wars and your Star Trek at the same time. You awesome? know the religions that is Hinduism and Judaism, they promote this the most. How does that make you feel? The timeline goes as follows. So in 1955, Operation Deep Freeze starts. And when Admiral Richard Byrd gets back and comes on live television and tells us... Anyone who's going to talk about General Ad, Ad, Admiral Byrd, 
just needs to read his logs and what he said about how he was captured about by the UFOs and how he saw swastikas, the same as the ones the Nazis were using. Found more land the size of North America. They quickly start NASA. President Eisenhower calls over the Nazi traders in Operation Paperclip to start the upper space mind control program. Don't look out there. Look up here. Look, everybody. We're going to the moon. Then, in 1959, 12 nations started the Antarctic Treaty, followed by 42 more nations, where they had decided, you or I cannot travel or explore any part of Antarctica, south or past the city of Caramel, without military clearance, without the aid of a guided tour. Do you really think that this is just a coincidence? More. Imagine if I had more land. Imagine there is more, more land out there. More. To explore, more. to reside, more resources. You think, um, you think they tell you and I about it? I'm sure a lot of you have heard about my $200,000 globe challenge. And up to this point, no one has been successful at completing the challenge. We've had a few clowns here. Yeah, he has $200,000 sitting around to give to us, right? And there that have stepped up to the plate. Here Look at this. Open your eyes, right? But he has that flat earth, the Magi symbol on his t-shirt. Just like NASA and United Nations and all the other organizations. That's what they were. They are the flat earth people. And uh, claim victory. But at the end of the day, you can't make water stick to the bottom of a ball, much less spinning. Okay. You can't show where sea level turns to sea curve. There's no curvature on the x-axis or y-axis. That stuff is flat. Here's a very simple answer to that is take a drop and what is the shape of it? It's a circle. A fair challenge here for Neil deGrasse Tyson. Why don't you get off your fat lazy butt and out from behind your... Why is the, uh, the shape of the drop always uh, in circular, spherical? Because it's representative of the forces around it screens and your scripts earth throughout its life even when it formed it was spinning and it got a little wider at the equator than it does at the close earth got a little bit wider at its equator than it did pole to pole so, so you spin you know when you spin pizza dough it kind of flattens out like spinning pizza dough yeah you know so it just gets flat. if you were a cosmic giant and you came up to earth and you rubbed your finger over earth's surface it would feel as smooth as a cue ball to you wow if you shrunk earth down to the size of a cue ball yeah. it would be one of the smoothest roundest cue balls ever made that's how round earth is so it's not actually a sphere it's an it's oblate it's like pear shape you're a great spicer it's funny, 60 years ago, I, I sent a whole bunch of... Why don't you get off? So this is another one of those ideas of creating the boogeyman rather than having a proper scientific talk or a proper objective talk, which I'm going to show you in a little bit. Off your fat, lazy butt and out from behind your screens and your scripts. Earth throughout its life, even when it got a little wider at the equator than it does at the close. Earth got a little bit wider at its equator than it did pole to pole. So, so you spin, you know, when you spin pizza dough, it's kind of flattened out. Like spinning pizza dough. Yeah. You know, it's just flat. Flat. If you were a cosmic giant and you came up to Earth and you rubbed your finger over Earth's surface, it would feel as smooth as a cue ball to you. Wow. If you shrunk Earth down to the size of a cue ball, yeah. it would be one of the smoothest, roundest cue balls ever made. That's how round Earth is. So it's not actually a sphere. It's an it's oblate. Where it's like pear shape. You know what, Tyson? It's funny. Six years ago, I, I sent a whole bunch of questions for you to answer. Um, and uh, I noticed you haven't answered them. You're not a scientist. You're an actor with a, with a couple of science degrees. And so is this person for the most part. There's people with uh, those same qualifications flipping burgers in Burger King. Like <laughs> so you don't impress me. You disgrace, Tyson. You are a lying Jesuit. Where is the argument for a flat earth? We'll come to that. Thug and a deceiver. You are a degenerate from <laughs> Good luck to all your lying when you're down in <laughs> doing favors to <laughs> And remember my name when you're in there. Santos Bonacci. Hey, Neil, you talk about pear so much. Why don't you try eating a few of these That's actually good. Hey, Neil, if the level of motionless plane is so easily debunked, so easily refuted, then why don't you just debate Eric Dubay? Why don't you get off your fat, lazy butt, out from behind your screens and your scripts? And debate Eric Dubay. You've heard the name Eric Dubay, but you're scared. You're chicken. You won't debate Eric Dubay because you don't have a script and lines and people telling you what to say. You know you'll get demolished. Why don't you just come on a podcast or any type of show, 30 minutes, 15 minutes, maybe an hour, if you've got the and debate. Eric Dubé is it? Flat. See how much of a man you are there, Mr. Mike Drop. Looks like we're going to have Eric Dubé, he said he's agreed to do it, talk with Neil deGrasse Tyson. What? Yes. <laughs> I had asked you to debate one of them flat earth guys. No, I don't. I can't. I, no. I know. No. We talked about it and we're going to have him on Skype. No, what we do is, and I think this is a diabolical plot, so that the next time we can ship people en masse into orbit, you all want to be the first in line because they know we're going to send them. So they can see it around Earth. They're going to be the first ones in space. Just so they can stop annoying the rest of us. <laughs> I, I don't think you're correct. And I know that you're not correct. Why the backpedaling, Neil? You already agreed to debate me on Joe Rogan's podcast. The show was scheduled, posted on Joe's site, announced on air twice, and then you suddenly decided that you, quote, don't debate flat earthers. What happened? I'll tell you what happened. Someone at NASA told Neil, we're not going to let you go head-to-head -head with Eric Dubé, because he'll make you look foolish. 
prove me wrong. Okay, so that is so Bismillah Rahman Rahim. So now let us look at uh, this document so we can begin to connect the dots of how strong of an argument. So if you remember, let's go over now. Let's look at the four solid proofs and you decide. Uh, this is what I consider the top four solid proofs for the flat earth uh, argument. Number one, based upon the video, the experience of a still earth. So that's fitrah, right? So that is the human fitrah is a strong proof. For me, uh, the human experience is a strong proof. So there's one strong proof there for sure. Empirical, the thing that I saw that was most empirically true, meaning just not rationally true, but empirically true to try to prove the earth is flat. The best one I could see in the whole video, at least from my perspective, was the hot balloons. Okay. Number three is the flashlight experiment, which I thought was totally bogus, but that's the best I could do for number three. And number four was pictures showing things getting smaller as they go further away. Again, these were the number three and four was the best I could come up with. Really, out of all the four, there was only one real proof, and that is the earth is still. And I said, I gave the example of the cat, of the ant in the car. Um, but, you know, another thing you have to do, now you have to compare, you have to weigh, right? So you have to weigh this very strong proof, the human fitra, versus the hot balloons, which is, Again, it's a straw it's a straw man argument because it has nothing to do with NASA. This question has nothing to do with NASA. From the beginning, there have only been two real philosophies. So hot balloons is the empirical argument. The flashlight experiment, which I showed a counter experience experiment to that, where the light was just fine after turning it off. Pictures getting things getting smaller. Uh well, three and four are like there, you can say rational, but there's no empirical or mathematical or any any proof in terms of real evidence of what they're saying, right? Uh, hot balloons is interesting if there was something else to support it that was really strong. The strongest proof is the, the human experience of a still earth. But here's the problem you have with uh, point number one, which is that you have the flat earth, you have the heliocentric, but the ge geocentric also believes the earth is still. So, or that, that the feeling of the earth is still. Which, again, seems to contradict the Quran. For example, I mentioned two verses, Kullu falaki yasbahun. I mentioned the fact that Rahman mentions the earth having a diameter, right? Aqtar is samawati wal ard. I remember, I, rem uh, I went over the word fulk also, meaning an axis. So these things all show that it's spherical and it is moving, uh, something round and is moving. These are the, the embedded in the meaning of the word folk. And uh, but then I'm going to show you one more just to make this argument. Again, I have Quranically, there are many, many arguments. So there's no need to me for me to go over each and every one of them. But I think one of the most interesting ones for me, at least, is this one. In Sutul Mulk, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, uh, <coughs> in ayah number 16, Am an bikum al -ard. Are you so confident that, that Allah who is in the heavens will not cause the earth to sink in? فَإِذَا هِيَ تَمُورُ While the earth is spinning. Okay, as you, uh, beneath you as it spins, meaning the earth. Okay, so now, uh, this is just another point in there that is kind of going beyond what I wanted to do. I wanted to talk about types of argument. So, earth being still is a fitra argument, but there's a strong uh, Quranic argument that no, the earth is moving at some level. And 
the earth being still is, does, still does not prove the earth is flat. Because the geocentric model also believes the earth is flat. Right? So there, just so everybody understands that in the history of mankind, there have been two basic models. Sun and everything revolving around the sun. Or the earth and everything revolving around the earth. Okay? If everything's revolving around the earth, the earth could be still. I don't understand why we have to go towards the flat earth as, as an answer. Uh, when geocentrism can actually answer uh, the same questions. Now, another very important question that I usually ask myself uh, is, is there any country? And this also comes from the Quran in the same passage there where Ibrahim is told to look to do, to, you know, cut the four birds and ask for them. And is there any contradictions in the big picture? So if you remember in the argument uh, Ibrahim made with Namrud, right? So it starts with uh, Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam saying to Allah, كَيْفَ تُحْيِي الْمَوْتَىٰ Oh Allah, how do you give life to the dead? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, أَوَلَمْ تُؤْمِنْ Do you not believe? بَلَا وَلَكِنْ لَا يَتْمَعِنَّ قَلْبِي Yes, of course I believe, but I just want my heart to feel the tranquility. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told him to get four birds, put them and cut them up, and then put them in different mountains, different places, all mixed up, and then call them, and they'll come to you uh, running. And so that's that happened, okay? And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, mentions the story of Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam, okay? Uh, and what does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mention? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions that uh, this point that, look, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brings the earth from the east. You bring the earth from the west, right? Because he said, I can give life to the dead. And so he said, oh, okay, you can give life to the dead. Then why don't you um, uh, so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions uh, actually this is mentioned before uh, two ayahs before. before Alam tara ladina haja Ibrahim fi rabbi. Do you not see the one who argued with Allah regarding his, his Rabb and atahu Allahul mulk because Allah gave him kingship so he thinks he can argue now if qala Ibrahim rabbil ladhi yuhyi wa yumit Ibrahim said my Lord is the one who gives life and dead qala ana uhyi wa meet I also give life and there's no contradiction see I'm God qala Ibrahim inna Allah ya'ti bil mashrik shamsi min al mashrik Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brings the sun from the east now you bring it from the west fa'ti biha min al maghrib fa'bohit al ladhi kafar so confounded was the one who did kufr. What did Ibrahim do here? Ibrahim والسلام, showed him a contradiction in his own argument. Okay? So this is another big part of how I process things. So are there any contradictions in the big picture? Meaning with this whole picture of the flat earth scenario. Is there anything that I am hearing that has an inherent, uh, you can say, contradiction in it? Okay, so one of the contradictions is, okay, NASA is hiding everything. And even though that has nothing to do with flat earth, the spherical earth, because NASA has nothing to do with this argument, it has more to do with creating a, a in, it's the typical uh, Dajjali script. You create an enemy and you become the good guy, right? And you throw punches but NASA is hiding everything yet there are crucial documents that say the word flat earth so wait NASA is trying to hide things or they're trying to hide things from the pilots but yet we have documents saying the earth is flat so I mean it's like it becomes more problematic when we go to number two the number of people not telling the truth even when the whole world is basically hiding the truth so basically all the sailors all the pilot people all the communication uh, companies all the people that are in the in the aircraft industry all the people that are in navigation all the people that ha are in observatories in the different universities in the world even the people that have private uh, telescopes in their homes uh, they're all part of this conspiracy right so um, that is a big contradiction because conspiracy by its nature can't be everyone involved in it 
can't have like 10% of the whole world's population is involved in it, you know. And if they are being tricked, how are they being tricked, right? Um, so the number of people not telling the truth, even though the whole world is basically also hiding the truth. Why do they attack everyone yet do not spend the same time and energy to prove the point? I'm going to give you an example of some scientists speaking on this issue. So you can have a compare and contrast of some, you know, so, some sensibility. Now, here's the most interesting thing that they have that they could do. They have the money to make this expensive documentary with millionaires in it, right? This movie was showing this documentary with millionaires, yet they do not have the money to do a simple experiment. You know what simple experiment that they, if they wanted, they could do it. It's so easy to do it. Do you know it takes about $4,000 per minute to make it t this type of documentary? So they spent anywhere from 130000 at the very least $1,000 a minute, to at least, most likely, $260,000 to $500,000, okay? So why are they not willing to do some basic experiments that would prove them right? Okay, and I'll tell you what that is in a second. Conclusion, the, mo the importance of knowing the overview of past history, this has nothing to do with NASA. So all their arguments really about NASA, it's just a, like for somebody like me, who people are always attacking Islam and, and using like this and that to attack Islam. That's what it is. It's like using NASA to attack to, to, for another objective. Importance of knowing everyday overview of past history, a cult or Hellenistic or geocentric. This occult, this occult magi uh, uh, pushed agenda uh, is very interesting. Uh, to me and to me just because the flat earth is brought to the earth from Babylonia it just goes right out the door so the only two other options are geocentric or heliocentric okay now in order to create a field a subject like we have tajweed we have psychology nafs, we have tafsir, quran we have Hadith literature, hadith studies, right? Jadwat ta'dir, and so on and so forth. When there's, you make a field in Islam, it has to fulfill certain conditions. What are the Islamic terminologies of this field? What is this field in Islam called a flat earth? What is it called in Islam? Can you tell me that? Number two, what is its scope and its limitations? What does this do? What are its terminologies? What are its basic principles? It's an explanation of a certain ayah. Which ayah? Uh, what are the benefits of this subject called the flat earth or whatever? What are its Sharia rulings? Like, what does this have to do with Sharia? Uh, that um, whoever, uh, the, the benefits is that we'll finally know the shape of the earth. Okay. And Sharia ruling, uh, what is the Sharia ruling? That it is... Uh, the sunnah of the prophet to know the shape of the earth it is fard to know the shape of the earth it is uh it is you should know the shape of the earth because it is the true shape of the earth compared to what the kuffar are saying like i don't know whatever your sharia ruling is um in the end uh one of the most important things i want to say is that you have to look at the bigger picture the bigger uh how is everything interconnected and you have to understand how things are being marketed to you how things are being sold to you, right? By creating a boogeyman, uh, by creating these expensive documentaries that are all, is was there more emotion in this movie or more rationality in this movie? Okay, don't be a reductionist. Try, don't see, look at the forest before you look at the tree. Okay, and look at the tree before you look at the leaf. Okay, so now I want you to compare uh, the four versus four, okay? Sutra Rahman, diameter. Okay. Ya ma'ashal jinni wal insi nistata'atum an tanfuzu min aqtaris samawati wal ardi. Fanfuzu, la tanfuzu na illa bi sultan. Right? So you, in order to pass the diameter of the heavens and the earth, the diameter of the earth and diameter of the heavens, you need sultan. And then, kullun falaki yasbahun. Something on its axis that's moving. Okay? Whether it's a ship or whether it's a planet. Mathematically proven by Al-Biruni by At-Tusi, by hundreds of Muslim scholars, by hundreds of Muslims, experts in the field. Which reminds me that, how many experts did I see in this video? I saw one, 
And he was the most uh, foul-mouthed person. In the theolo in theology, Imam Ahmad bin Hanbal, Imam Taymiyyah, Imam Hazm, and so many others were also part of this opinion of the Jamhur, the majority. Uh, and all these sources, these people, th th this is authentic, meaning authentic sources by experts and so on. Observable experience. Right? The ship, the ship in the horizon. The nature of the universe. It's all round, spherical. It seems to be that language of the universe. History of those who were for and against flat earth. The people who were against flat earth developed no sciences based upon those principles I mentioned right now that you have to have a feel like Tajweed. Well, what, where is it based off? What is it called? What is its name? Right? Nobody said, okay, we're going to make a flat earth uh, subject. And this is what it will be called. Okay. Uh, now let's look at the four solid proofs of the flat earth. Experience of the still earth. Yes. Hot balloons. That's empirical. But has nothing to do with flat earth. Flashlight experiment. That was a failed experiment. Pictures showing things getting smaller as they go further away. Again, something that all the scientists would say no to. So... Now, let me just go over this document really quickly before I do one last thing. The truth is, when there is no other logical explanation but one, that's the truth. So now, if you had to choose between the two groups, which one is closer to the truth? Well, that's up to you. Is there something in the argument that's one plus one is two, like math? Is there something in there like the sky is blue, like Yes, the earth feels still, doesn't seem like it's moving. Is there anything in there that's coming from an authentic source that you can trust or something you heard from an authentic source like I heard him read the Quran? Is there anything in this whole argument that has more to do with semantics than uh, the actual argument? Uh, source is very important. Truth is when something corresponds to the facts. If there is smoke, there must be fire. So when you're connecting the dots. So how was this movie connecting the dots? Uh, okay, NASA is bad. Uh, some famous people that are in the physics department are bad. Uh, NASA does CGI. Um, they have air bubbles. Um, yeah, basically NASA is bad. So that's how they connect. So they connected the dots. This is how they connected the dots in the in the video. They basically said... NASA is bad, the Earth is flat. That's the argument. Okay, So is that a strong argument? You have to decide. Truth is when something corresponds to the facts. If there's smoke, there must be fire. So if NASA is lying, the Earth must be flat. That's the logic. Is that a good form of logic? What is the logic of the geocentric model or the heliocentric model? Well, the math numbers prove it, and we and the Muslims were able to predict the eclipses that were going to come, and they were able to pr uh, predict the movement of the celestial bodies, and they were able to navigate from one place to the other, and so on and so forth, and they were able to tell the direction of the qibla. Okay, and they were able to see that the direction that they're pointing towards the qibla is the same direction, mathematically as well as the direction in which the birds are going on, which would be based upon spherical trigonometry okay so truth is when something corresponds to the fact if there's smoke there must be fire if the math lets you predict the events of the celestial orbits of the celestial bodies then there's a high chance you're correct if the quran also is pointing to the fact that the earth is moving then it must this is how i'm connecting dots at my uh, four points that i mentioned Okay, uh, how much of the arguments are emotional? How much of the arguments are based upon irrational assumptions? How much of the arguments are based upon something rational? Okay, yeah, NASA lies, yes, NASA cheats, yes, NASA does CGI. But does that, is that assumption possible? Probable. I say, I don't know if it's probable that NASA is on purpose trying to cheat people. I think it's possible, but I can't prove it's probable, but maybe somebody thinks it's probable because th that's their argument, basically. 
rational and empirical. For example, uh, you could say it's empirical and rational that, look, the earth is flat. Obviously, that's the reason they send hot balloons to the air. Okay. But that is, to me, actually an example of irrational but empirical because it has nothing to do with the argument. Truth is when there's only one explanation. Revelation is the ayahs that I used or somebody else used clearly saying that the earth is moving. Is it clearly saying the earth is flat? Follow both sides of the argument and then you have to weigh. Connecting the dots. Four truths at least. That's my personal uh, way of doing it. When is something a lie? Okay. Does it, if it does not, it does not have a framework of definition. So there was no, it was all just normal layman language with no techni there's it's not a field of study okay it's not been made into a field of study they spend all their time bashing nasa rather than making up a proper field of study okay when the media is playing a hand well the media is playing a hand when things are seem scripted like all the flat earthers have all the same arguments why just like all 19 uh, COVID, uh, you know, Circus 19, everyone had the same arguments. Every single person parrots the other person and that's it, you know. And why do these people have the cameras on them? Why do they have such expensive ability to make such expensive documentaries but can't get basic experiments done or won't do it when it opposes something without a foundation of, its, of itself, okay? A uh, double standard is something to consider when mixing truth with falsehood. So the truth is NASA lies. The falsehood is the earth is flat. So this is how they're connecting the dots, hiding the truth. Truth versus falsehood. An Islamic practical level. Truth is truth when it's humble. You know, when you see narcissism, making fun of other people, uh, making a boogeyman, all this is signs of arrogance and the sign sign of something something's seriously wrong. Of course, I know what that is in this case, Alhamdulillah. It is the Magi, flat earth. Okay. If your truth leads to narcissism and does not improve your behavior, then your truth is false. Social media. Social media meaning, you know, you got sixty seconds to make a point with all the imagery, with all the emotions, all the sound works. I don't have money to do things like that. When you take an absolute stand, when it's a matter of degrees. Okay. Is it possible the earth could be flat? Yes. Is it probable? No. So nothing is absolute except what Allah said is absolute. If it's an interpretation in the Quran, it's not absolute because you had to interpret it. You had to give it that way. But if it's what it is, if the Quran says the earth is round, or if the earth says the earth is flat, and to deny that, that would be a big problem. But the Quran doesn't say the earth is round. The Quran says the earth has a diameter, or diameter, di di diameters. The Quran says celestial planets or celestial bodies have accesses. Now, I connect that in the Quran with the earth. I do. I very strongly think I do. So I think I have a strong stance here. History outside Revelation is the weakest of subjects, okay, unless itself had a process of documentation, like a book. Math and language are, is innate, and they're the most powerful forms of information in a sense that math is innate. You can't, numbers don't lie. So when you're able to predict the next eclipse or the movement of the sun, well, you have something, you have a pretty good uh, formula. Political science. Is this something that's creating manufacturing consent uh, towards Third World War III, for example, in the case of Ukraine? Is it manufacturing opposition and polarization, like in the case, the case of Flat Earth? Making an argument, what is your claim? What are you saying you stand for? To be for something is stronger than being against, because anyone can be against anything. That's not an argument. Anytime someone proves to you something is not, Take that argument in the garbage. Put that argument in the garbage can. Okay? You do not prove a claim by disproving another claim. Islam is not true because Christianity is right. Okay? You can only say Islam seems better than Christianity because Christianity is wrong, for example. Clear arguments for a spherical earth. One, Surah Man, Surah Yasin, about the diameter and the axis. 
Al-Buruni and Tusi on how they did the math and its prediction in the Ijma of the Ummah, the observable experience of what happens when you go to the sea and see the ships sail, a uh, history of those who were for and against flat earth. Now let's see the four solid proofs of flat earth. The experience of the still earth, hot balloons, the flashlight experiment, pictures showing things getting smaller, the last two are completely false. I couldn't even come up with four really to tell you the truth. Are there any contradictions? There's a lot of contradictions. Okay. Uh, conclusion, this is magi, magic, flat earth. Uh, I don't know why geocentric model is not on the table. If Muslims were serious, seriously will, willing to connect to their own tradition and they really wanted to connect to something that is right, they should do more research and studies on the geocentric model rather than the flat earth occult model. Okay, And I discussed what makes a field within Islam and I said look at things from an overall view, how things are interconnected rather than seeing how they're just at one little, oh because NASA is lying therefore this must be the case. This is uh, not the way to think for serious people. Now, let me show you that this is a more reasonable way of how you make arguments. So let's do this. ...to the slightly more complicated. One of the things you can see yourself with a pair of binoculars is if you actually go out to a lake and there are boats on that lake, the farther away a boat is, the more the bottom of the boat will disappear and you'll basically just see the mast of the boat. And as a boat goes farther and farther away, the last thing you will see is the very top of the mast of that boat. And that's because the boat is actually going over the horizon that's curved. And that means that as it goes farther and farther away, you see less and less of the bottom of it and more of the top of that. You can see that with binoculars, by an ocean, by a lake. It's really easy. That wouldn't happen if the Earth were flat. You would simply see the boat getting smaller and smaller and smaller as it went farther away, but you'd be able to see the whole thing with the same proportions. Go to the uh, seashore. Go to a seashore and figure out why you can't, if you live on the East Coast, figure out why you can't see Spain from the East Coast of North America. Just go uh, to the middle of the Mississippi River and look south. Why can't you see the Louisiana? Why can't you see New Orleans? What's, what's the problem there? Well, then climb a tower or go to the top of a hill or a mountain, and you'll see a little farther, but you will not see to the other side of the earth, places we know to exist. For example, I've been to London. I, I can tell you other people have. I've been to Vancouver, British Columbia, and you cannot see Vancouver, British Columbia from from Boise, Idaho, let alone from New York City or Toronto or what have you. Then there are some other proofs that are a little more obscure, but they're actually really lovely. And one is to observe what happens during a lunar eclipse. Now, a lunar eclipse happens when the Earth casts a shadow on the moon. The moon actually goes dark. In fact, if you've seen one, you can actually see the Earth's shadow go across the moon. And when the moon is entirely in the Earth's shadow, the moon looks kind of dark and even kind of red colored. It's really, really beautiful. What's happening in that case is that the sun is on one side of the Earth. The Earth is in the middle. And it's casting a shadow. The Earth is casting a shadow on the moon. And as the shadow moves across the moon, you'll notice that the shadow is curved. It's round. So something like the sun that's bigger than the Earth and is able to cast a shadow of the Earth on the moon can actually show you the shape of the Earth. Aha, you might say, but could the Earth be a disk? Could it be flat, but it's actually still shaped like a disk, not like a sphere? There was a Greek scientist called Aristarchus, and what he noticed was that you can get a lunar eclipse at many different angles where the sun is. Sometimes the shadow goes straight across the moon. Sometimes it just kind of glances the moon, just a little bit is in shadow, just on the top or on the bottom. From every different vantage point, every different angle the sun is casting a shadow, you always get a perfectly curved shadow. The only shape that can cast a shadow that's curved from any direction you put the light is a sphere. So people have known that the Earth is sphere. Notice the consistency in the argument, right? For thousands of years. And by the way, this is an example of a empirical argument that you can prove by observation. But then the black, the the flat earthers will say, "Oh, but the earth, the moon isn't uh, solid; it's plasma, and that there's another sun called a black sun that's actually doing all the eclipsing and not the sun." It's just messed up. Look at pictures from space, where you see the Earth as a sphere. Those pictures are not faked, and I'll tell you, just if nothing else, here's why you can tell they're not faked: just to create the paperwork that NASA has created for in NASA in this one case, just the paperwork to send anything out in space, to send people into orbit or send them to the moon. That amount of paperwork would make faking it prohibitively expensive. No one could afford to generate that much, that much documentation. Then the other thing, if you want to get into this, if you're really serious, if your friends are really serious, have them get on a boat or a ship and go out at sea. And you'll notice you can't see infinitely far. Furthermore, if you get into it enough, pick up a, a book about navigation or go online and learn about navigation. A very, very important thing you have to take into account when you try to navigate the ocean from a ship or a boat is how high you are off the sea surface. The higher you are off the sea surface, the farther you can see, the farther away the horizon is. I actually said this to somebody, I couldn't believe they'd never thought of it, that you know, with binoculars you can see planets, you can see Saturn and Jupiter, you can, you can see Mars with a telescope, the sun, the moon, everything else you see in the solar system is a sphere. So we're, we're the one thing that is different. 
you know, and, and that actually that actually made somebody who was who was more interested in actually hearing information. That actually got them to think. They're like, you're right. You know, you know, everything else we take a picture of is here. And you guys, come on. Everybody watches newscasts. You all use mobile phones. You all see airplanes fly around. You all go to uh, see Ed Sheeran in concert one day in London, another day in Melbourne, Australia. This all depends on our fundamental idea, understanding of the size of the Earth and its shape with extraordinary precision. And if you want to get into it, the Earth isn't quite a sphere. It's a little bleh. Its spin is a little bleh. It stretched it, made it slightly oblate, as the saying goes. And it's not okay to think that the Earth is flat. This is not a viable argument. Um, I have friends who have been on the International Space Station. They have orbited the Earth once every 90 minutes. You know, I've had personal experience with people that have been up in space and can see with their own eyes that the Earth is round. And of course, we've taken all these amazing pictures from space. That they're so beautiful, all those pictures of the Earth. So I don't really know what's going on right now with this Earth is flat thing. In a debate, what is the construct? It's typically two people, and there's an audience, and you debate some opposite sides of some issue, and then there's a... I usually don't like his attitude that much, but this point of his is pretty good, and it's important. Because this is what the the media does, right? It can take anybody cr that has charisma and make him look like the the winner and the more objective. And the problem is that Muslims, uh, whether we're talking about the deen, we look for the charismatic person, right? Or if we're looking for anything other than that, we look for the charismatic. We think charisma means authenticity. And charisma means uh, like the prophet was charismatic in the sense that they do it on TV. No. The prophet said more with his silence than he said with words. It wasn't about charisma. It was about truth at its very inner core. And this, what the video, the documentary you saw, that was just all just the way it's designed shows you. For a person who has spiritual insight, the way it's designed tells you it's made to trick people. This, what these people are saying, this is what this is the type of discussion everyone should be having in a sense of an expert in a field, right? Winner of the debate. And then everyone walks away reflecting on the winner. So who wins a debate? It's often the person who's who's charismatic, who who's maybe charming, that's related to charisma, of course, who has a good way with words, good vocabulary. And you can have someone who doesn't have any of that, who is speaking objective truths, who could lose a debate. So then what is the point of the debate? If one of these points of view is objectively true. So I will not enter a debate where I have the objectively true side of an argument and the other person does not. That is something that should not be debated. Does not belong in front of an audience getting debated. You want to debate something? Debate political policy. Of what okay, so uh, that's fine. So I wanted to share this with you because I wanted to share with people some of the ways in which I think about things and how when people tell me you should watch this documentary oh this will answer so many of your questions if it's going to be a lot of hot balloon you know a lot of fluff and no real argument it doesn't it's like I'm beyond that you know in a sense that I'm allergic to that I'm allergic to uh, arguments that are gonna punch back throwing back you know you're gonna you're gonna talk about nasa when the subject is if you can't make a claim and stick to the points that prove your claim okay that sounds boring but that's that's how you learn that's how you learn something is true is that you listen without the fluff without the emotions without the this is the bad guy or this is the good guy and you listen to the argument and then you think about how does it connect to the bigger picture is this what is the source of this is it the media is it the magi what's the source how authentic are these sources that i'm being given what are their arguments are these established fields or is this something new that just popped up yesterday and now they're making a big deal about it in the last two years so these are all things you have to consider in your, this is how Islamic thinking has to be, right? Without that, you're not going to be able to think from an Islamic perspective. And there is absolutely no place in the Quran, no one place in the Quran that says the earth is flat. Not one place. The earth is like a carpet. The carpet is symbolic for comfort, not for a shape of the earth. The earth is like a bed because the bed is where a person comes to rest. That's where 
anybody comes to rest, it is a comfort. It is a symbol of comfort. There's no, either sutihat or basata or mahad, any of those words that you use uh, to show the earth is flat, you're giving an interpretation for something that is being used as a metaphor. And so first you have to establish what is the purpose of that metaphor. Because the metaphor has to be something that's not too similar. Because if you say bees and her, her, uh, bees are like hornets, well, that's too similar, right? If I say knowledge is like chairs, that's too dissimilar. Oh, you know, chairs, you have to connect things in order to move for the chair. The chair has four legs. So I was talking about having four arguments. So it's like a chair. It's too dissimilar, right? But if I say he's like a lion, I'm talking about a certain aspect, not about how he looks. I'm talking about a certain quality that a lion is known, known for, right? That he, his bravery is like, or that that Khalid ibn Rid is this saif min suyufillah, the sword amongst the swords of Allah. A certain quality, not that he's thin like a sword. So the thing is, when you're taking a metaphor and giving it an interpretation, if you're not careful, you're going to mess up big time. And then there's another very important point, which is that you have to come back with Quran to how was it understood by its original listeners? Because if you don't first consider this, how did the Sahaba understand this? And how did the Sahaba understand these words? If you don't start at that point before there is explanation from hadiths and riwayat and the athar, when the Sahaba heard this, what was it that they were hearing? Okay, and then which of the interpretations closest to what they were hearing? And then which of the interpretations would you look at in terms of language? What is it saying for the times that you live in? Right? So for example, uh, the word ard, as I mentioned before, never understood in its global context, like the whole of the earth. It's always understood in its, in its, in its local context, in the land that I'm in, my land, right? And so, um, there's a lot of uh, work Muslims need to do in terms of how to think, how to think, how to weigh evidences, how to look at the world we're in, and understand the difference between something that's just came off the blue and is being promoted and it's so silly because you have three options flat earth the magi and then you have geocentric and then you have the heliocentric so two things are being promoted one is not being promoted and i under i don't understand why flat earther muslims would never look at the history of geocentricism i don't know why they would not consider that because they're so stuck on the shape rather than uh, the what f fits the fitra is the earth is still, well, maybe geocentrism is a better option than this pagan magi, majus option of flat earth. And that's just, I'm just speaking facts, and this is just how it is, so I'm sorry. Um, okay, assalamu alaikum warahmatullah. Uh, I know I went really long today, but assalamu alaikum warahmatullah. Inshallah, take care.